good good timing max all right ladies and gentlemen and everything possibly in between welcome to another episode of the anatomy podcast featuring a great and lengthy fry black and death core intro by our good friend here brandon o'neill both of vile revelation abadonia and Uwugasm, because that was a thing that he had me check out a long time ago. And not gonna lie, if not Vile Revelation, if not Abedonia, I definitely want to hear some more Uwugasm in the future, because I'm all about that anime <laughs> slam. That happened tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a bad idea. Okay, my day. <laughs> but today, um, we are continuing a new tradition that was pitched actually by Mr. Brandon O'Neill here for the show he suggested he said why don't we go ahead and listen to a brand new album that being cast from eden having yet to be released so technically we're time traveling right now in reality you guys are going to be hearing this conversation you guys are going to be hearing this commentary it shall be unleashed upon your audible observational senses audible sensations i guess or senses um on the 28th right february 28th or i think that that sounds right. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah. And then uh, for a sleep year. Gotcha. Hell yeah. So basically, we are still a good chunk of time out from this album releasing. But when me and Brandon were talking about getting this session set up, it started with, okay, I'm ready to get Wild Revelation on the Anatomy podcast. He said, I am too. Let's make it happen. And then he said, yo, what if we go ahead and listen to our new album early on once we get the mix and mastered product, the final product that will be distributed to public domain on the 29th? Let's go ahead and listen to that album early. Let's go ahead and do an album listening session, do all, well, basically on my end, I would say all the clickbait faces, reactions, impressions upon listening to what is Black and Deathcore, but also expanded into the stars, which ends up being very brand familiar with other bands in the scene like Warm Shepherd to obey a tyrant viscera and plenty of other iconic acts that continue to exponentially grow with time not only is this some good old ignite the church formula music not only is it heavy death core with plenty of breakdowns plenty of vocal olympics as the trending term is now occurring bouncing back and forth over social media but also the sense of collaboration on this record, I think, is going to be one the boys in Vile Revelation will be proud of until the end of time. And as they truly kickstart their discography, if they haven't already, right? So, amongst other things, we're going to be starting off this session today. So far, just me alone, but Finn might bounce in here and there. We just don't know when he'll be bouncing in, so keep that in mind. And like I said, the complication kind of serves its own purpose right it's not often that people in two different time zones both who are still financially struggling one who's trying to basically work three jobs the other who's trying to find a job in the first place despite his endeavors and tattooing well the schedule might be complicated but we will work with it the best we can over time and let's just say finn is making the necessary arrangements to blow the expectations of this podcast of this show out of the water going into this year as 2024 progresses this is the year of the anatomy podcast this is going to be the year of blind without our failures just speaking for the efforts we plan to um that i plan to fulfill um as we just project into the future like at the very least i will be re-recording -re error it's going to be a great year that's all you need to know there are going to be a great many artists that we also schedule on this podcast for our intention will be to schedule at least three bands per week on sunday monday and tuesday if we can manage to accomplish that you will be seeing 144 episodes of the anatomy podcast in 2024 alone I am looking forward to it. It's going to be a very prominent future, and it all starts here. If it hasn't already started with the 2024 co-pilot pilot and the session we did with Oklahoma Ass Beaters Cell to promote and listen to their EP, The Unbearable Form, early on, now released through Unbeaten Records. Gentlemen, welcome to session. It's good to finally have you here. It's good to finally have you here in call. I am very excited to listen to cast from eden your new 2024 full length coming out later this month how are you boys doing today so far uh, i'm doing pretty good all right i've been excited to do this since we got this all planned out 
I am too. And just in case you folks um, might want to know, maybe this will keep you engaged early on in session. Ultimately, some of the vocal features, the vocalists who featured on songs on Cast from Eden, including the boy, Brandon, from over in in virulent in in vckb they just released their new ep last weekend but he did feature on this record and ultimately he might pop in during session which i really look forward to as we have yet to record an anatomy podcast session to promote what will be the new necro thug and ep this is an ass beater it is easily i think in virulent is easily one of the newest best slam bands and they're just trying something very very fresh I love like, violence, man. <laughs> yeah, me too. We love the boys in, in Virulent for sure. And being that they are, well, an AZ local, um, I almost managed to get them to go over, come over to my house yesterday. Um, no, that's not true. Friday um, afternoon. I, I was like, hey, you boys should come over. And they were really open to the idea. They would have been open to the idea if they didn't have to pray play break and blast the next day with other iconic up and coming deathcore slam beatdown artists including and not limited to nine dead knights of the abyss reminiscence ritual of despair 97 minutes and cephalotropsy which has been around for a long time but they're making a comeback a show. it's a very very solid shit and i would have paid anything to either be there or be i don't know if you boys knew about this but um while Upsell for a Mental Cruelty is on the Beyond the Eternal tour. Um, they did a date in Texas the other night featuring good friends of ours, good friends that I've been networking recently, including an artist that we hosted on the show before, that being Conjured from Killeen, Texas. Keelan out there, per se. But uh, um, we got Crafting the Conspiracy. Um, that's another band that is well known in the Down Dune Productions Club, per se, because not only does Ethan Jarma not only is he the vocalist of crafting the conspiracy but he also designs half the logos associated with nithful abhorrent abomination abysmal decay and other projects as they enter the downtune productions club per se um iconic night for them i'm sure shout out to them and i mean J ethan kind of called me out too um in the comment section of that of that video he's like well here's the thing you wish you could but you didn't why weren't you here right um, but overall it, it's, it's really cool to see bands that I've been networking with or that I've already hosted on the show, accomplishing great things. Also shout out to Lucretia and their anime fest coming May 3rd and 4th over in California. Basically imagine Comic-Con, but with also a metal core band set, like I'm That'd pretty sure that's like that, <laughs> that's going to be unrivaled in the scene. And I look forward to how many years going into the future they host this. And hopefully we can get blind without our failures to be an opening act there as well as we plan to accomplish some anime themed material, very similar to Brand of Sacrifice's Lifeblood, which is really the epitome of the Anatomy podcast. But without me just shouting out all of the now 67 bands, that I've hosted on the show so far, more or less, with some bands returning as individuals that we haven't hosted yet, just to kind of wrap up the story and get somewhat, somewhat more caught up on the lore of certain bands, certain projects. Releasing February 29th or somewhere around that time, near the end of the month, really. Um, that was really fun to listen to, and it feels fantastic to finally have that part of this session conquered, as after all, like I said before, Brandon was the one who pitched the idea in the first place, allowing for things to be heavily more uncomplicated for the anatomy podcast and Sean cross going forward. If I do say so myself, um, with many efforts before, to be honest, um, alluding to nothing more than me doing clickbait reactions for a song or three, um, it's just a difficult process. So to finally have something that's a lot more engaged and to have that be the new formula, well, it feels a lot it feels a lot more worth the effort but now now Definitely. ladies and gentlemen and everything possibly in between over on sean cross let's dig into the anatomy podcast now Definitely. i'm sure you boys are more than familiar with the formula we have for the show the first half of the show correlating with the people me attempting to be the black and death core or black metal version of david attenborough providing you guys as much time as possible to tell your story and basically everything relevant to you as musicians and then in the second half we will be 
questioning you both as if you're not Brandon O'Neill and Isaac Clarkson, but instead we will be questioning you as if you both exist as one person as vile revelation. We will be asking a good handful of clickbait questions that perhaps you have heard from people in person. And if not, well, we get the answer. We get the questions answered here. We will do an under the skin session and then conclude the session with a little bit of what's going on in the near future beyond possibly cast from Eden, even though that album's not even out yet, you know, as musicians, as creators in this medium, it doesn't really matter even if you have a widely successful album out because more or less that is the rubber on the tire and eventually you have to replace that rubber. You have to keep the momentum circulating. Nice. Otherwise, things become stale. People lose interest and, for example, they then hopscotch over to other projects like Of Ruin and Virulent and you know whatever options they have, whatever bands or artists that they listen to that are recommended in the For You underneath loud revelation on spotify quick question too can you guys hear what is construction going on in the background behind me really no, no i don't think so good okay because they are going ham back there with jackhammers <laughs> and everything on a roof it's like a seven person party they've been there since like early this morning so at least as long as you guys can hear them then that won't cause any uh, audible interference with the session but um getting started getting kick started as per formula Basically, what I want you both to do is introduce yourself, tell us your name, tell us your role in the band, and maybe where you grew up at, right? Or where you grew up in, what major city you grew up in. Um, as if you're standing before an elementary class for the first time, just like, okay, tell us your name, introduce yourself to the class, and then we'll truly get started. Take it away, boys. Favorite part. You can go ahead and pick up. Uh, I'm Brandon O'Neill. I'm the vocals for Vile Revelation. Um, I grew up in Sedalia, Missouri, which is about an hour east of Kansas City. Um, I'm Isaac Clarkson. I play guitar for Vile. I do songwriting, production, mis mixing and mastering. He does everything. Uh, marketing. Um, I grew up in Center, Missouri, which is a, a very small town, um, about two hours from St. Louis. Okay, so Fantastic. That's where I'm from. thank you for introducing yourself on a more elementary level. And now, whether we decide to first enact frontman syndrome and give Brandon some attention for about half an hour, or whether we <laughs> jump over to the uh, the primary mastermind when it isn't vocal, he thinks he's <laughs> <laughs> um, whoever wishes to take the reins basically of the show for a little bit, you can because, as after all. We've done the elementary introduction now. Basically, now I want you to go as far back as possible in your history, in your legacy as a musician, as a music enthusiast, perhaps a creative medium, maybe early on before you were taking projects like Vile Revelation seriously or anything beforehand. Maybe there were other creative mediums you instead wanted to invest into, whether it be painting, sports, theater, whatever the fuck may have, may have occurred and gone on along the way i want you to take as much time as possible and really just kind of recall and review upon your story so far and provide currently what is drum roll over on spotify on your monthly listeners i don't know the exact number so i'm typing it up on public domain um currently your 439 monthly listeners i mean hell it's like it's it's a pretty big number and it's a lot more than four monthly listeners for blind without our failure so still those 439 people will want to hear your story take it away gentlemen whoever wishes to go first and i'm going to go ahead and close that window while i'm at it you probably I'm, have quite a i have a, quite a rich more of history than i do I, i've i've been around some things seen some stuff uh, i'm just i'm going to keep it band related to shrink the amount of talking I'm gonna have why don't you me. start with the fourth time that's not even the first band I was in. I know, but that's what's relevant. No, I, that was relevant to me. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. I played guitar. Was like my intro to metal music. I played guitar, um, but we we played like it was like a post hardcore metalcore cover band. So we do like Sleeping with Sirens and stuff like that. Uh, Pierce the Veil, yada yada. But uh, I really wanted to play deathcore, 
uh, one of my friends had shown me like Chelsea Grin, The Art is Murder, and Aversion's Crown, Lorna Shore, that stuff, like way back. And I really wanted to start playing Deathcore. And uh, I was trying to get into their band they were starting, uh, but they already had three guitars and a bassist. So they made me try out for vocals, which I really had not done. Uh, my tryout was so bad that I just left immediately <laughs> after doing two. So I did two songs and I left because I was like, that was terrible. Uh, but they messaged me and were like, where'd you go? That was sick. <laughs> what was going on? <laughs> uh, I didn't do vocals again for probably seven or eight years, like try out for a band or anything. Wow. Uh, and then I ended up in a melodic metalcore band called Mark of the Plague. Um, which that kind of like got me used to playing live in front of people a little bit. Uh, but then I went from that. I really wanted to play deathcore. I'm not the biggest metalcore fan in the world, and that's okay. But yeah, uh, so I moved over. Uh, we started a band called The Fourth Kind, uh, and it was like an alien themed deathcore band. Uh, and it, it, it like did decently well for us, uh, like locally and like around a couple hours around, but, uh, we got to play with the last 10 seconds of life and a couple, uh, Conan and mouth breather, uh, lots of really fun shows in Kansas city. But uh, that's about the time I saw Isaac post online on the deathcore metalcore fans group i'm sure everybody knows it that would be watching this uh i saw him post that he was uh looking for a vocalist he had an ep together this and that so i was like hey i'm interested in doing like slam or black and deathcore uh and it just so happened that we lived like three hours apart so i just like ran over to track with him we tracked the entire first EP we dropped in a day. Not even a day. In we, about four hours. In about four wow. hours we tracked it. I was way too loud tracking. Uh, almost passed out a few times from holding some of the longer screams. But uh, that's... It was very impromptu. Yeah, very impromptu. And we, uh, My lyrics, I had on a notepad the night before. And... I made a pit stop on the way there the night before, and then I was leaving to his house to record. None of my lyrics on my phone. Uh oh. So, uh, all the lyrics were improv. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out pretty well, though. Yeah. Um, so I'm a lot younger than Brandon, if you can't tell. My history might not be as deep. <laughs> um, but. I started playing guitar around the age of 11. This would have been 20, 2013. Um, I started playing guitar and I was really into black metal when I was younger. Um, I was taking a lot of music classes at my school because ever since I was a young kid, I wanted to be in a band and play guitar. Um, even as a younger kid, I was into Metallica and, um, a lot of dad metal bands just that my mom listened to as a kid, but, um, started playing guitar around 11 and, um, didn't end up actually starting a project until probably 2018. I started writing my first songs and I started a band called Cast from Eden. And oh, wow. um, okay. I started it with my my good friend from school, Caden Romig, who is Vile's second guitarist now. Um, started that with him, and we had we had an EP written, uh, but we couldn't find a vocalist. So we sat on that EP for a long, long time, and then I ended up rewriting it. Still, still under Cast from Eden, I rewrote it. And that was the time when I met Brandon and we recorded that EP and changed the name to Vile Revelation. And um, I'd say that's our origin story. Uh, we released that EP and um, 
it went over pretty well, I would say, for the quality of what it is. But um, that was in 2022 when we released that EP. Yeah. Uh, that was in March of 2022. And uh, October of that year, we released another single, um, Beneath the Chapel of Misery, which um, I think the quality of that song was quite a bit better than the EP. Um, but then we took a, quite the hiatus. Um, I started working on the first song on the Cast from Eden album, Planeta Interfectorum. Um, I actually wrote that song in 2021, along with the um, the other song is on the first EP. It just didn't end up making the cut. Um, so that song we sat on for a long, long time. And um, we took a, a little break over a year of playing a few shows, just writing, working on the album. Um, and now it's finally going to come out, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. Because we've been, we've been waiting and working on it for a long, long time. And sometimes when it comes to major efforts like that, it's better to not force the process. It's better to take your right. time. Definitely. Make sure thing fits into place. Because if it doesn't fit into place and you're just like, fuck it, let's just get it out to get it out and then move on to the next thing. Like that still creates momentum, but like it's kind of like hollow momentum. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Say the rubber tire without the wheel well itself, right? That's kind of how that that would that analogy would present itself in accordance to that statement. Like I know for sure that there's ultimately a reason that my own project has taken so long to really kickstart. It's mainly been just getting the members who want to stick around for a long time and consistent that's, hard. that's the that's hardest, hardest part. part yeah yeah that is the hardest part because depending on how how set in stone they are as far as being musicians well that just provides so many different complications in and of itself it's like well do you right. actually want to write music or do you just like the idea of saying i'm in a band or i'm in a band project and that's really been most of my own history so far so yeah that um, seems to be a big thing for a lot of people is right that the the work aspect of it it's uh hard to get that across and um i mean that's one of the main reasons i've ended up doing everything for vile revelation is because it's that and that i'm i'm picky i'm picky about how i want things done and i'm i'm uh very attached to my music uh brandon can vouch for that that's uh even uh with the lyrics and the way vocals are recorded i tend to uh take the reins maybe not on purpose but just because i'm so attached to these songs that i've worked on for the last three years um and i i tend to be the one having the vision of the final product and uh he's just helping me get there <laughs> a very loose way of interpreting yeah <laughs> <laughs> i just start yelling random stuff basically and then i would say i'm the king of describing stuff in the most roundabout way yeah mm. i i'll describe how something should feel yeah and then i have to be the one to interpret his ramblings yeah into <laughs> uh and an actual idea. Composition. To be honest, yeah. I'm just too early for my time, if I'm being honest. You could <laughs> say that. I'll be the Confucius of this time. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's horrifying. No, nah, I mean, yeah, sometimes... That's, yeah. yeah you, that's normally saying. how our writing sessions go, is um, Brandon will come in and spew some nonsense, <laughs> and I'll I'll have to put that through my, uh, my translator <clears throat> and... Uh, we might get an idea out of it or two, <laughs> but I did write one one guitar part. Oh yeah, um, the last song, "The Fall of Yggdrasil, uh Brandon wrote the lead for that chorus, which I actually liked a lot. That's why it stuck. Um, yeah, he's a uh, he's still got some talent remaining on the strings from all those years back. So. Yeah, and that's that's definitely one of the first questions I had for you, really, Brandon being that you kind of kickstarted the people part of the podcast, you know, telling us your story and mainly mm -hmm. sticking to the music side of it, mainly sticking to former projects you've been in 
and everything leading up to Vile Revelation or Abaddonia and Ugasm as well, because Lord knows those are other projects you do as well. Um, so, like, amongst other things, like, along the path, where did you, what, where did you more or less decide that vocals would be the thing that you would focus on as opposed to possibly pulling a, um, what is it, a Chase Wilson from Up Sulphur, maybe doing um, guitar and, well, not exactly cleans because you're the primary vocalist for a deathcore band. Um, but, yeah. you know, nonetheless, doing vocals and playing an instrument at the same time, like, have you have you arrived at that crossroad yet or have you decided nah i don't even want to worry about that i'm just going to enact frontman syndrome i have the floopy you know toupee looking hair so i can just do vocals it's okay <laughs> uh, no i the big thing for me is like i used to go to a ton of deathcore shows so it would always be the front man like doing his thing and the guitarist always with back in the day it was the scene synchronized like headbangs and whatnot and like i just always liked that energy over like having to stand still playing the guitar and doing vocals at the same time but if you want to move around for a part you really have to like you know not do vocals for whatever and i, I just i don't like the concept of having to do that live I, I want to be very free to like interpret how i feel during the show and like what energy i kind of have during the show like into how i'm represent myself fair enough and um of course for those who are a fan specifically of vile revelation as we all continue towards time through time and space one thing we always want to do is challenge ourselves so like as a member as until further notice exclusively the front man of vile revelation like what things in the future are you planning to do to kind of like continue challenging yourself as a vocalist like maybe one day if you get comfortable enough with vocals like maybe pick up the axe and like you know try to coordinate that the best you can like what can we look forward to as far as you um wanting to like the milestones ahead of yourself that you're looking to accomplish uh so we are setting up a new little uh social media for me yeah so we're, which we're actually going to start recording for right after this let me pull up pull up the app but we're going to be working on uh working on a TikTok. uh so my at is each corpse that's all lowercase all one word e-a-c-h-c-o-r-p-s-e -E. um we're gonna be doing we're gonna, we're gonna track out some covers tonight that i think should be pretty fun uh, we'll see where it goes from there oh yeah i mean building a social media presence and developing your personality as a vocalist, attempting yeah. to distinguish yourself from the many other vocalists up and coming in the scene. Um, a few I can name would be Griffin Jernigan, um, yeah. formerly of, what was it, Mortem Obscurum, now of No Existence. I mean, um, freaking, what, what is his name? Dylan, Dylan Scuda, I think. Yeah. of that porn abomination scooter yeah. and other projects he's he's definitely doing that ethan germa um derek cannoli mr unholy cannoli of nithful um screaming mimi of bro job and end of an era um all of them definitely are trying to build their platform and be more consistent because i mean the more you are consistent with your craft and then you essentially network without meaning to by covering other bands as material well that also kind of gives the impression to the scene maybe to those 439 monthly listeners as well as the bands that you cover that you are all you're always checking out other music but if anything you don't allow the creative pollution and too much influence upon your own material to continue making vile revelation what it is yeah. as time progresses and that's always really important to formula as you're marketing as you're trying to promote your own stuff is like hey i also do covers for other bands i know um Finn, the Orc King, our co-host actually for the Anatomy podcast, he dropped a bomb recently going from mostly being known as the one vocalist in the Mental Cruelty um, King of Fire audition to cover the entirety of A Hill to Die Upon. Um, he went from that to a clean sleep token cover, and it actually is really, really good. Um, he has since, I do believe, released that Um but he has not been able to distribute it to Spotify. So that's over on Spotify if it, or over on YouTube if anybody wants to listen to it. It's actually really, really good. Um, but 
definitely the more effort you put into um, social media and promoting yourself as a personality as a vocalist definitely the more you're going to stick out um not as a like stick out like a sore thumb but more or less stick out like a blade from a broken sheath or i don't know it's a terrible analogy but because like why would the sheath be ripping but um yeah that's very important and that's it, it requires a lot of patience and just that yeah. word consistency, like it's it's hard to keep up with social media sometimes um, with a new band coming out every day. So I wish you the best of luck in getting that started. And I will definitely be following you over on Sean Cross, even though I only have about 110 monthly like, followers, really. Um, small platform, but nonetheless, the support will be there. So you can you have that guarantee. Um, so, Brandon, as we're continuing to talk about you, and of course, like more or less, we bounce back and forth, which is rather organic. Um, I guess I can ask Mr. Isaac the same exact thing. Like going into the near future, of course, you're already doing so much for Vile Revelation behind the scenes. You are the finishing touch on what is, until further notice, an independently distributed band. Um, so, that comes with a lot of pressure, that comes with a lot of responsibility. And like you said yourself, when it comes to actually making the material, well, some of the songs, they don't ever reach the light of day. And that's just tortured artist syndrome. There are yes, some songs that Brandon's like, yeah, that's a banger. But you're like, nah, fuck that. Uh, that'll be for like an album three years from now. Or yeah. that's a um, <laughs> so there, of course, is the process of being a tortured artist and wanting to make sure that the material you do push out and that you do pay for, you are engineering yourself investing your blood sweat and tears into well that's why you mentioned you're so attached to it is because you are a part of so much that makes what um vile revelation what it is very very important so what are some milestones in the future that you're hoping to accomplish as the basically the main brain behind vile revelation um so like I said this album cast from Eden took just over two years to write record um engineer and then finally to be released it took a little over two years to do that um and going back to what we talked about with the social media presence with consistency and all that um i want to be a lot more consistent with the releases which um that's what we pushing myself a lot more than i mean i i won't be able to take two years to write another album because like like we talked about in the beginning if if you don't release new music people will get you know they will go somewhere else and you'll lose the momentum pretty much so uh my goals are to release a lot more music um to write a lot more music to produce a lot more music um and hopefully vile revelation can get some traction through the that consistency um we're hoping to do an another EP coming out in June of this year. And then we're looking at doing a full length by December of this year. Yeah. So I'm going to really push myself on the songwriting aspect. Um, and I'm just going to just to do that this year to kind of push myself to work harder as a songwriter and you know, not afford myself to take two years to write an album, to um, make more decisions that are final instead of writing a song and trashing it and um, repeating that process, um, having more ideas that I'm confident with and sticking with those that will actually make it onto Spotify or Apple Music or whatever it is. Fantastic. Now, it's a good goal. And in today's world, I only really know a couple bands in our scene in the underground counterculture music scene that managed to release an EP or album every year. And even then, like there are major gaps in between, but it's because at the end of the day, behind the scenes, well, there will always be setbacks. There will always be obstacles right. to conquer, whether a lineup changes, maybe you're signing to a new record label and they want you to be quiet or maybe like finn the or king our co-host mentioned um during the pilot right because me and him were like should we talk about this he said well i don't think we should because we don't really have anything to talk about yet that's available for people to listen to or immerse themselves in um with that statement that he provided in mind um it's very very important that when you are mentioning stuff of course like 
effort, A for effort, something like that. Every now and then provide your fan base, provide your audience updates as far as what's going on, why things are being delayed. Be right. transparent. Um, and I know for, for Matt, like for a goddamn fact, guarantee that with my own project, that <clears throat> when it comes to when we do have a full lineup, when it comes to when we do have more singles to release, more consistent EPs to release, and then basically unleash what is at at least a 10 album roadmap so far with consistent themes across all of them that will hopefully get us from well an opening band act to maybe even bring me the horizon level notoriety one day Perfect. um because it's always important to have ambitions and plan things out have consistent themes and maybe That's just cool. catch people off guard in some way marketing marketing wise other than that it's like well you can talk about things, but don't talk too much about things. Be transparent as far as what's going on. Let people know, for example, if you run into order delays and you're like, hey, we had a shitty distributor. We need to correct that. Sorry. Who needs a refund? That type of stuff. Definitely. That is more or less the consistency that I've seen is really all that matters at the end of the day, especially when people start making financial investments into your physical merchandise. Um, if you have a shitty distributor, be transparent with it. Of course, don't like do a smear campaign for that distributor unless they are mm -hmm. absolutely bottom tier, like just mouth breathing distributors and they, they fucking ripped you off. Maybe they stole money from you and you haven't gotten the merch back and then they ghost you or something because that shit happens behind the scenes. That is the okay. bitter truth of being in a band project. But other than that, like be as transparent as possible. That way people see a consistency in authenticity. But that's just talking about marketing. That's talking about the future based off of what if scenarios and some pretty like unfortunate what if based scenarios. So no reason to to dive too much into what has not yet occurred yet. Um, but if anything, kind of backtracking a little bit and continuing upon like learning more about you guys. Um, Brandon, if anything, I was wanting to ask you because I've only been to New Mexico, Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma very briefly, and then I had my year in Tennessee. So, of course, there are a lot of foreign lands to me. There's a lot of new uncharted territory. What can you personally tell me has been your favorite part about growing up where you were? Maybe the music scene. Maybe there are things that people would never even think of when you mention the state name Missouri. What can you tell me about Missouri, the good and the bad? Well, where I'm from specifically, we get the state fair every year. Absolute blast. Traffic's terrible, right? <laughs> so that's 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 Missouri in a nutshell, right? Missouri's beautiful when you get in between the cities. Um, our cities aren't really the best cities. They're they're fine. Our, let's go Chiefs. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. It's it's just a beautiful state. It's got a lot of variety to it. When you're up north, it it's pretty flat. Has some Nebraska Iowa vibes to it. Uh, and then you get down south. The farther down south you get, you go from Rolling Hills to the Ozark Mountains. It's like you have. It's just got a good variety to it everything's an hour away no matter where you're at yeah <laughs> it does not matter i live exactly one hour from isaac I'm like and that's just know. as of recently i remember you mentioning you were three hours from him before so yeah yeah, yeah. i made a move um probably two years ago now to uh living in columbia missouri it's been two so, years it's been about two years yeah I am getting old, dude. <laughs> Older, never old. You can't call yourself old until you're triple digit. Yeah, you're just aging. Yeah, I'm having a midlife crisis on the couch right now. <laughs> well, thank you for thank, thank you for providing me some insight as far as like what could eventually one day be you know visiting opportunities and stuff because oh, yeah. we all dream of being able to tour throughout the entire united states for starters if not <laughs> starting with our local coast like what if you're in the midwest you're like okay let's go up through the middle east coast you're like okay let's do east coast tour and for the west well it's kind of like an l shape mm -hmm. um because you know you, you go to certain spots and like they're pretty but they're fucking expensive like overall um yeah. so definitely getting some insight as far as like 
different destinations I have I have not yet been to here in the United States is always great. Um, Isaac, what what uh, feedback can you provide upon uh, Missouri? Um, I'm big on nature. I am, and uh, Missouri has it. Uh, Missouri has it abundantly. Um, Missouri is the cave state. If you didn't know, um, I'm big on hiking and caving and all of that. Uh, I'm in a cave probably every week. I just um, I'm real big on being outside and having pretty scenery. Um, and Missouri has it everywhere. Sweet. That's why. That's, I that's, love that's really awesome. Have you ever considered cave diving? Uh, you know, I don't know if I have the balls for that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude's nice about to be story. cast from Eden deep in them into the caves of Missouri. <laughs> yep. You know, I don't know if I have it in me. Fair enough. Yeah. But uh, caves are love- fun. I like, I like the atmosphere. Hell yeah. How many, uh, explain like, a lot about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You like, I mean, black and death core black metal, it kind of descends from like being in those kind of secluded places and just like yeah. being at the mercy of nature sometimes. And well, Definitely. infinite <laughs> reverb. Yeah. yeah. Also that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, do you guys have any cryptids that are local to your area? Uh, Brandon might be considered a cryptid himself. <laughs> <laughs> so there's actually one i don't live in sedalia i kind of live out in the sticks um and it's in this well not in but i'm close to this small town called beeman which has like i think the population is like 45 or something Jesus. but uh, we have the beeman monster is our cryptid it's a super local cryptic. Nobody knows about it. It's a it's Bigfoot. Like that's oh. it's a Bigfoot knockoff. Turns out it's just Tyler Beam. <laughs> it, it, it was actually me running around naked. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Beam. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, we great. can definitely use some more cryptids. Missouri is pretty. Uh, yeah, I, I need some Appalachian Mountain level cryptids. Yeah, we're pretty. Uh, get the fucking Ouija board. If I don't get Mothman. <laughs> In Missouri in the next year. Yeah, we're pretty clean on the cryptids up here. I guess it's uh safe to go outside. You could say I wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't say that at all. <laughs> but there's no monsters. <laughs> so I personally for me, I've heard of the Appalachian Mountains. I've heard of the Smoky Mountains. What the fuck is like what are the Ozark Mountains, man? I've never heard of that before. Have you heard of the TV show Ozark? Yes. That's the Ozark Mountains. Okay. It's uh Common Mountain could be a bit. That's a stress. I would say, yeah, it's it, it, we're reaching a bit, right? But driving up them, some of them do feel like mountains. It's just not not the whole mountain. They are mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah, they are. They are. Oh, it's great. What's the elevation of them? Do you know? Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell, enough to make a school bus go like thirty of it. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look this up real quick. Uh, um, Ozark. Lake now, of the Ozarks. Yeah, Lake of the Ozarks, by the way. Spot. Party spot. Yeah. Absolute. Oh, gotcha. Party Cove. Party Cove, look it up. Have a blast there. We got Branson, which is the Las Vegas yeah. of the Midwest. <laughs> um, yeah. I also think that's a bit of a stretch. Definitely. But they do have the coolest theme park I've been to. It's called Ooh, Silver Dollar City. Yeah. It's a uh, it's like a pioneer's pioneer themed i would not not quite pioneer but we're talking settlers very shortly after yeah yeah Yeah, it's an interesting ride but it's fun yeah lots of bluegrass oh yeah sedalia birthplace of ragtime Ragtime? yeah ragtime we have a ragtime festival every year people will be playing pianos set up in the back of cars it's insane okay interesting um and this definitely looks like my cup of tea these ozark mountains because they they have that they have that healthy abundance but more specifically the reason i looked it up it is an elevation of 2559 feet which that's insane like at least compared to here i'm I'm pretty sure if i look up was it payson arizona shout out to everybody on the mogollon rim baby um see payson arizona payson arizona elevation Okay, yeah, five, five thousand. Yeah, it's not close. Uh, but 
No, it's, that's still pretty solid. I mean, I mean it's, it's hard. Is, I mean, pretty much the only high point in Missouri. Okay. It's, uh, I don't even think that it, I would say that it's high. It's more just like higher than the, the highest variance. Yeah. I mean, uh, up north Missouri is pretty much Kansas. It's, it's, it's so flat <laughs> and boring. And that's, of course, where I'm from. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, even driving a few hours down south towards the Ozarks, it's like you're in a completely different world. Yeah, you get rolling hills. Yeah. And if you haven't right. driven through Kansas, mm. you need the pleasure of seeing your first rolling hill. <laughs> <laughs> That's a life-changing Kansas experience. is quite the experience. I bet. You know, all you get to see, windmills. That's it. On Good Western line. Kansas. Eastern Kansas is a bad. It's got like Lawrence and Topeka and whatnot. But the second you get past Lawrence, it is nothing. You can see until the earth bends away. <laughs> it bends away. Uh, see, I, I will say that that's like my least favorite thing. Because here in Phoenix, Arizona, most of the major me Phoenix Metro Valley area is on top of a giant mesa. And we have a city called Mesa because it's another mesa protruding above that bigger mesa. Um, <laughs> it's... It's treats. very, very boring to me to be able to see absolutely everything relevant to my life, especially growing up, because um, there's a city called Northeast Mesa, or at least more specifically, it's Northeast Mesa. It's right before you get on Bush Highway, and then you can head out to Suara Lake, which is not that far, pretty big lake, but it's very consistent with the oil that leaks from boats that go there, so that's fucking annoying, and therefore I don't <laughs> even like going there anymore. Um, oh West Lake and West Lake Pool? <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's nice it's like oh my gosh it's so colorful until you see fish start float up i'm like oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me next no. that shit that shit's toxic quite literally but like you go down bush highway and you can go to swirl lake or you can take the major interstate and then that takes you up to payson which is really really nice it's consistent um the mogion rim is actually host to an alien abduction story depicted in fire in the sky if you've ever seen that oh, yeah 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 i know mm -hmm. about that that's uh what's his name travis um i know the story don't be yeah. like i know I'm a, I'm a big fan of aliens if you I tell my YouTube. <laughs> dude like i boy do i have a story for y'all that i i experienced myself on the mogi on rim and it acquires a lot of open-mindedness but let's just oh, say well, it i'm was, there with you yeah i it, it was profound enough man to where i though it was dangerous for a good chunk of time because we had something very very evil and predatory stalking our camp there was also another counteracting like positive energy that was there protecting us and i had like a dream about it and everything i'm going to be writing material about it because not many people can say that they went up to camp up north during a weekday there was no one else up there so there was no one else to be screaming like a person um in the midst of two coyote packs yipping and yapping back at each other i think you guys know what i'm talking about exactly you all got that skinwalker vibe down there yeah exactly <laughs> so basically that night we didn't more say it because he's down there yeah, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> we can say yeah we don't have those up here lucky bastards <laughs> basically gollum so running around <laughs> but um no it was uh in the middle of the night, two coyote packs are yipping and yapping back at each other. And then there's a there's a separate kind of like half coyote scream, but also human scream. And it actually makes both of the packs go silent. So we're like, oh, fuck, is that what we should be listening for? Because I had been talking to my very skeptic friend about it throughout the entire night. I'm like, you're not really supposed to say it, but I think we should be fine. So I was saying it manifested that shit. Um, and we had something stalking our camp throughout the entire night. But the counteracting force i wholeheartedly believe because of a man named mike patterson who has a channel called sasquatch ontario um he's based up in well ontario and um, if you guys look him up really really cool channel like one of the best channels i've seen and i wholeheartedly believe most of the content on there um his claim is that he's had a 15 year long relationship with an entire family of sasquatch um, but they've been teaching him bits and pieces of information along the way. And it was very, very um, interesting that most of the details or events that happened that night correlated in t real time with what he was claiming as well. Um, the fact that there are actually a lot more of them out there, but they have the ability now to disappear at will. That's why they haven't been found yet. 
um, because they've evolved and descended to such a plane that, well, to hide from the wrong people, including the feds, um, go figure, they can disappear into thin air and disappear between trees. Um, unfortunately, skinwalkers have that same ability. Right. Um, so essentially what happened was it started with the two packs of coyotes in the middle of the night. They were yipping and yapping back at each other, most likely because they secured a kill. And then there was that separate scream. I was actually three fourths asleep and my brain was like, get ready, get ready. It's coming. And then I snapped awake just before that sound came through or like just echoed throughout the entire. Oh, we lost audio again. We cut him off. <laughs> it's, the it's the CIA. Um, it's like it's right behind me. <laughs> uh, but he was, he, was, he, was, uh, he was very skeptic until that point. He's like, Sean, is that what we should be listening for? But I'm half asleep. I'm pretty comfortable. I'm like, no, 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 don't worry about it. Go back to bed. Um, we proceed to have something stomp around our camp, but it's only one stomp and it's maybe like five feet from me, but it sounds big enough to be a bear. Um, so I proceed to fall asleep and I have premonitions. I have dreams and I see at least two years in, into the future. I've seen, I think what is going to be the civil war here in the United States occur, um, with Russia actually supporting Texas because they're, they're planning to do that, um, on a different note. Um, or at least they're like, do you want this exceed from the United States? Yeah, sure. Cool. We give you battle hinds or whatever. Um, so I had a premonition, premonition, premonition of that, um, and that was back in 2021. So I, I have no, no idea if it's going to happen or not. But I have premonitions. That's that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, so essentially, I had a dream of this older woman with her face covered in like ash and soot, and she's like sitting in a lawn chair right next to my campsite, which was placed in a different spot when we were awake. The campfire is completely lit. I get out of the tent and she's like, okay, he is there. He's right over there in the tree line, but you're, you're safe. You're fine. I also see seven faceless people peeking out from the trees, which I'm pretty sure are the walkers victims, the people that he's already killed. But I see him kind of peeking out and geographically speaking, everything was like in line. Every detail was correct to our campsite. Um, cause there's a dirt road and right across from that, you can kind of see this dude like poking out of the tree line, like doing that number and you're like, Ooh, or whatever. And this older lady, she's like, he's right over there, but you're safe. Don't worry about it. And right before I fall asleep, I have that, like I'm being stalked. I have that anxiety, that fear, that heart rate, that heart racing sensation. And essentially right before I fall asleep, there is almost a counteracting energy that's like, it's okay. And I immediately like collapse and I fall asleep. Um, so I'm pretty sure that was whoever this older lady was. But basically my buddy had something walking around his tent for about half an hour straight, um, pretty thick footsteps. And then the footsteps left the, the campsite. They, they left our campsite. And um, I'm pretty sure that older lady was an elder Sasquatch that was also watching over us because we were talking about that too. I'm like, okay. We're here peacefully, right? You know, you got to make your introductions when you're going camping. And if you're open-minded to that, if you're, if you believe in that sort of stuff. So I said, okay, we're here tonight. We don't mean to cause any disrespect, but if anything does happen, that would much, that'd be much appreciated. We're not trying to manifest any, you know, I didn't, I didn't mention the word. We're not trying to manifest anything negative because we're here respectfully. We're just trying to enjoy being off grid. And then that whole debunkle happened. It was insane. And that's only one story I have. I'm hoping to go back to the Mogi on Rim and have many, many more. But that's that's a tangent. That's that's a more personal tangent because um, I'm very fascinated with the supernatural and the paranormal. And amongst other things, one day what I would love to do is branch off the Anatomy podcast into being able to travel to certain locations, meet up with boys like yourself, and go not cryptid hunting, but like go off grid for a longer period of time and see if we can interact with any of these, um, any of these yeah. creatures off grid. Like that would can be we super. It, can we call it cryptid, cryptid vibing? Cause I'm down with it. <laughs> I go vibe with some cryptids. <laughs> I would too. I'd rather have cryptids as my neighbors than people half the time. So <laughs> <laughs> I, it, 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 yeah, um, I've definitely had my share of experiences with, uh, not cryptids per se, but definitely, uh interdimensional beings he told me not to mention it um yeah i figured i'd get into it since he shared his experience 
but I don't want to get super into it as not to maybe incriminate myself, but um, maybe not a physical experience, but more um, physical. Um, you might get where I'm going with this. Yes. Um, uh, definitely had experiences uh, being abducted, being um, operated on. Really? Um, having my head split open bilaterally and um, being worked on, I would say. Um, it wow. felt more like a, like a, a surgery, um, but it was like, it was like a good experience. Like I was being operated on in a, not like a, not like a bad way. Like they were doing it to help me. He's getting upgrades. Like something <laughs> like that. Yeah. I came out of it no better than I was before. <laughs> you thought but for, a couple of weeks. I, for a few days, I definitely did. <laughs> um, but um, I've had a, quite a few of those experiences, which are um, a big inspiration for what Vile is doing musically. Um, Cause I mean, once you experience something like that, it's like, that's the only thing you ever want to talk about. And that's that's like my biggest inspiration musically is to write about those experiences because they're so much bigger than life. Yes. And um, yeah, that's just where I'm at uh, musically and lyrically. That's what I mean, that's what it's all going to be in the future as well. Because, oh, yeah, I mean, those experiences change you for sure. They change you. Yeah. Like you can't you can't walk away from that and be like, yeah, I'm a normal person now. It's like, like, you no, can't I, brush that off. You, you, you can't you brush that off. It. Unless a Fed tells you to with like a with a gun to your head, and then you're like, yeah, yeah okay, like, okay, I won't talk about it. <laughs> but no, that's that's cool. So, w like, if, if I may ask, of course, um, was this more of like a an astral experience, like the surgery, or like do you um, remember physically being at certain locations, like an abduction? Yeah, like more of like, um, like a consciousness projection. Oh. type experience like i knew i knew where my body was in reality but i was a separate entity from that whoa um like i still had the knowledge of that i was a human just laying in my bed yeah but it like my perception and my consciousness was elsewhere which was That's on crazy. on an operating table basically and, yeah and out of absolute transparency were, were you sober during this no okay <laughs> back, 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 back. <laughs> but i mean still nonetheless like i've i can easily say that when it isn't more physical in person in real time in real life in this three-dimensional world that we understand yes. as earth and the universe whatever i've experienced a great many things including peeking into parallel dimensions where i'm like oh yeah this is absolutely the life i'm living and then i wake up and i'm like oh right i forgot i forgot i'm like sean crossed one five four four whatever yeah. um yeah out of like the, the 3 million, whatever, like not to provide too big of a number because there's no way there's 3 million versions of me. I'm not that cool. Um, no, man. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you on infinite that. Versions. Yeah. Everything is infinite. Everything is infinite. And that's, infinite that's reality. Yeah. Anything that's the beauty of probability is. and possibility. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I think going into the future, like obviously we're doing a lot of groundbreaking stuff this session, but I think more importantly, I will be expanding and plucking people's brains, picking people's brains of, about like any supernatural or paranormal experiences that they've had from this point on. And I mean, dude, imagine like getting on the call with the boys in Awakened Providence and they're like, oh yeah, we accidentally conjured a demonic entity at one point. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would be something we would do. Yeah. In the vehicle listening to 100 gigs. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll Be plan careful, for that. Please. Yeah, we have we, we have a demon summoning on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of our weekly activities getting Timmy back into the, yeah. the, the smoke circle. Where do you think the sigil came from? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you guys have lore regarding that, or are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> no, I think I think he made that up. I yeah, can't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just, 
I'm like, Jesus Christ. Now we got to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty big if we did. That's uh, that's that's just a long week of work. Yeah, that that's that's a long year of life where you're like, yeah, we're vile revelation, but we also try to conjure Paimon and then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> experienced hand in hand what hered hereditary is like in real life. Um, I love that movie. Oh, dude. That movie fucking traumatized me. Oh, dude. Yeah. Dude. That's one of the best horror movies I think that I've ever seen. One of the it's best. It's very psychologically Narcissus. manipulative. And I thought it was going to be like a corny little thriller, like the Insidious yeah. movies or something. Yeah. And I watched that in this very room. And the images, many of the scenes in that film were just like burned into my mind for at least a couple Dude, months. Like super going disturbing through. movie. Yeah. We yeah. Super movie. disturbing. And how like sophisticated and like orchestrated the, the yeah. plot was by the yeah. antagonist at hand. Insane. Insane. Yeah. I, I love that movie. The ending scene is one of my favorite scenes out of any horror movie. I love that movie. So I so we're on the topic of horror movies. I don't yes. know if either of you have seen this. It used to be on Netflix, but it's called Satanic. And no. it is like I think so. One of my favorite horror movies. Uh, at the beginning of the movie, it's like two sisters and their boyfriends going to a rock festival or whatever. Or no, it's like a pop festival in California. Pretty on brand. Uh, <laughs> one of the sisters is like real goth, wants to go uh, go see like a bunch of satanic stuff. Uh, well, the end of the movie flashes back to the beginning of the movie when they're driving by this warehouse, right? Hmm. And they looked up in the beginning of the movie and it looked like a bunch of people tweaking, banging on windows, whatever. Well, at the end of the movie, it's them up in the windows, banging, trying to get their attention to get them out as they all like end up in hell. Cool concept. Appreciate Whoa. it. Whoa. So it's a time loop. Yeah. 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 Sounds like it. Yeah. Yep. Because there's no sense of time. Yeah, no, that's crazy. And I mean, that's one of the reasons I like uh, As Above, So Below. I passed. Were they? Yeah, I, the movie. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, honest, the movie's gas. <laughs> yeah, that's another one of my favorites. That's a great movie. It's not the most disturbing horror movie, but the concepts are really cool. Uh, I clearly am a big fan of The Fourth Kind. That movie is insanely good, but Dark Skies is probably my favorite alien movie. The only two war genres I watch are Alien and Possession. <laughs> that's, that's the yeah. two. If if neither of you boys have seen uh, No One Will Save You, which is a new uh, Hulu original film, that one is the best alien horror movie I've ever seen. And yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, you have some homework to do. That mm -hmm. movie, it kind of expands upon the idea of the greys. But then, um, very similar to Fire in the Sky, in which I, I, I thought it was very funny. Someone compared the aliens in that to Greta Thunberg, like looking like Greta <laughs> Thunberg. <laughs> like, How dare you! You're destroying the planet. Like, meanwhile, they're dissecting a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> that that was a pretty profound movie. That would that's probably one of my new favorites. And the fact that it's an AZ local story too, and the the yeah. people involved in that still like they're like, oh yeah, that absolutely happened. But there was a little bit of dramatization because of course it's Hollywood. Um no one will save you is if you guys have seen Midsummer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Think of Midsummer with aliens. Very similar oh, vibe. Yeah. I yeah, like that. It's really, really good. Um, and Brandon's like, oh yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely more organic and like definitely getting to know each other as opposed to how long have you been in the band? So this has been a very fun yes. conversation so far. Right. Um, it's a Missouri thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so if anything, we're this far into the session now, and we're almost, I think, two hours into session now, which is crazy. Really? um yeah we we've, we've been talking a lot we've been talking organically just truly getting to know one another and again just something to sustain going into the future with other bands because this is not meant to be the new keen star and i happen to be wearing corpse paint right this is not meant to be <laughs> you know a podcast themed off of a metal music reacting content creator um you know no offense to them because they have platforms I, I understand they're like okay well how would a podcast work shows like a uh, hard a hardcore keem show or even um the metal bird podcast i don't know what the fuck his show is called but they all have their own podcasts and more or less 
I like to think that mine is a lot more authentically engaged as opposed to just a marketing tool for, you know, right. the material we listened to earlier today. Um, and I always, I always try to make sure that that shines through compared to other podcasts. Um, but, um, without, you know, like my podcast is better. Yeah. Like fuck that. Um, kind of getting back to what makes you guys Brandon O'Neill and Isaac Clarkson of vile revelation. Um, one thing I always like to do for the sake of the podcasts formula is either pluck five different characters off of you. And these five characters can be in the category of overall genres, subgenre, album, like album of all time, sort of shit, singles, bands overall, or even people that have kind of helped you pave the path you have in getting to this moment, promoting, talking about cast from Eden, as well as telling your own story. Um, there's that. I can do the five characters, or I can kind of get, put you guys on the spot and have you mention your five favorite albums from 2023. That That's going to be a tough one for me. because so I, I, I have yeah, two options there. <laughs> I was gonna say because I spent basically the whole year listening to Hundred Gex. Yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> I'm not saying how reliable he is on that. Uh, but uh, the five things that got me to this point, I would say, uh, number one, Elijah Johnson. He's a uh, my friend that like showed me deathcore, and we went to all these shows together. We saw Chelsea grin eighteen times. Um, Damn. Uh, he passed away from a brain tumor, but he's like, the reason I started doing vocals, the reason I got into deathcore, it's like basically shaped my entire music personality. What was his name again? Elijah Johnson. Elijah Johnson. Thank you. Yeah. And may yeah, you rest in peace. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, uh, that, that's my number one push on doing vocals and just always improving. I would say number two, a version's crown. Uh, the Servitude and Tyrant albums, Xenocide's really good, but those two albums like shaped how I wanted to do vocals, what I thought I would want to sound like musically. Yeah. Like kind of the, they just have an atmosphere to their songs that nobody else has. I can definitely say, since I've met you two, like, um, a version's crown has definitely stood the test of time and i can yeah. see it kind of leaking through on efforts like a vultures and flesh or cast from eden yeah with definitely the more cosmic the more intergalactic the more spacey theme whilst yeah. also sticking to the genre the subgenre of deathcore that you're wanting definitely. to contribute to and yeah. um yeah it's, like it's like most alien core is really fast crazy guitar stuff rings of saturn and rings of saturn and night in texas yeah. like that type of vibe but like aversion's crown is just different because they just have this soul like soul crushing oppressive atmosphere to their songs they, yeah. and it's but it's like in a beautiful way uh vectors the breakdown in vectors is like the best example it's just pretty clean guitar playing and just a kick drum and then the uh, the second lead guitar comes in the rhythm guitar comes in the bass comes in just everything hits in that one moment and it's like knocks the life out of you yeah if i may ask being that you've been like kind of a long-term aversions crown fan too i've been meaning to talk to you about this um obviously since the release of this album tyler miller has uh, i do believe departed and you know he's full-time the editor's murder now um hell work hell will come for us all like do you think that's their like what is that place on your list as far as their discography because i really like that album but it definitely didn't stick with me over the years it was like okay this feels authentically like a deathcore album with an alien theme the album cover really spoke and like stood the test of time with that too it was a testament to the alien deathcore theme um, but it didn't, it wasn't obvious. It wasn't like too colorful. It's like, okay, this is an alien. This is a sentience that is here to bring hell upon earth. Like hell will come for us all. This alien and its people, they are hell, whether they're the Anunnaki or a more violent incarnation of the greys. Like that album cover 
it was it was probably one of my favorite um album covers at the time because it was like well this is it's a renaissance painting of a fucking alien with like some freaking polygon based technology and he's like fuck you humanity like you're our slaves now we're back and we're better than ever but we are the hell that will come for you all or you know we are the hell that will unleash upon your people so get ready either bow down or be eradicated um, that was the overall vibe that I got from the album. So like, I wanted to hear your thoughts and opinions on that record. I'm going to be honest. The first time I listened to it, I was pissed. <laughs> it's like, I did, it did grow on me, right? It did grow on me a lot. Um, there are a couple songs that I still like listen to actively. Um, but I just, it kind of lost the atmosphere for me, that album personally. It's definitely a different style. Yeah, it, where it, it, it fell in line more with the Australian deathcore scene that they're like mm. a part of. Like, it, it's more reminiscent of the art as murder and like that style, where Absolutely. the old style, like they just, nobody else was doing what they were doing. Yeah, I guess I so it lost the uniqueness to me. Right. That's fair. And I would not be surprised if like you just said it, like it had more of a thy art is murder vibe. I would not be surprised if that record exclusively is the reason that they ended up choosing Tyler Miller. I, I would say so. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I have, I have since not really listened to Godlike just because like, I don't know the, the, the whole, if, if I'm being fair in transparency, this is just my opinion, the whole like, vocalist exchange process for that record and how like inconsistent they were and how kind of quiet and just out of nowhere they were with yeah. basically at first confusing fans saying yeah this isn't Tyler this isn't um CJ Mc McHone on the record but it obviously was at first and then yeah you know, they, they adjusted things with time I'm like what the fuck is going on and then yeah. me that was a weird release yeah, it was a very strange release, and I thought the album cover was very, very, very simplistic compared to any of their previous album yeah. covers. I thought it was kind of lazy, too, because it's like, dude, I can find the same kind of band t-shirt for any slam band in any, like, underground deathcore store. Like, I thought the album cover was, like, really, really disappointing, and the minimalism and stuff. Like, of course, they're being independent, right? And at the very least, Godlike's album cover was not AI art generated. But yeah, <laughs> like when you develop a standard and when you know um, Thy Art is Murder specifically um, as being a band that mainly hires El Ryan Cantor as their album artist, it's like, what the fuck is this album cover? So for me, when it comes to listening to new material, but also being a graphic artist, being an enthusiast in calligraphy, logo design, of course, I love their logo. Um, I've loved all their album covers before. Human Target took me a little bit, but over time, like even the art, yeah. like oh, I think that art's pretty sick. sick. Yeah, Human that Target. over over time, absolutely. I love the idea of it. The fact that you know we're all as the Voina Code named in one of their songs, we're all slaves to a machine, right? Shout out to the boys in the Voina Code for we host them recently and have yet to host the other half. So that's the only reason that the episode might be delayed um, as of the twelfth of February. Um, but like i don't know man the godlike album cover it was kind of weird to me it, it was off-putting it's like how much did they invest into this how much thought did they put into this and then the whole like vocalist transition how abrupt and random out of nowhere yeah. um they were with kicking cg out even if like some people do believe the reason they did kick him out was like oh absolutely justified it's like eh, sure. not, like not really to me but that's just my own opinion um for very specific reasons and the fact that they didn't even communicate with him properly regarding that whole process and like he found out later um yeah it's just that like seems that to be a pretty common problem um yeah especially nowadays like it with the 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 way slipknot has been getting rid of their members you know the way they have to find out over twitter or a phone call you know it's as opposed to the band having the balls to tell them that themselves it's like hey we don't really want you in the band anymore despite right. how long you've been with us it's like what the fuck dude and you guys are the industry standard you're supposed to be the industry standard communicate with your fucking yeah. musicians when you're I making think both bands things. referring to slipknot and thy art is murdered are far past their prime um 
I'm having a spirit box moment. I don't even want to talk about spirit box. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like thy art has been. I haven't really been a big fan of them since hate. Um, everything after pushing for me. Everything after that was just kind of stale to me. It just felt like they were doing the same thing over and over again. Right. Which you can't hate a band for being consistent. Yeah. But they weren't. They they they're not innovating. If they just one time remaster face to a blender for me, I would be the happiest person alive. Though. Yeah, those original EPs. Yeah, those first two EPs. Ignorant. What was the other one? The adversary. That was uh, the first album. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, laceration, penetration, went mm -hmm. hard. <laughs> or two yeah. chains. Yeah. 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 Original thy art was really good. Yeah, dude. This hole isn't deep enough for the twelve of you. <laughs> That's though that and face to a blender are probably my favorite songs from them. Or parasitic autopsy. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Yeah, I mean, personally for me, I remember jumping on the train with them during what was the Deer Desolation cycle um, um, for Slaves Beyond Death. Like, that was such a banger to me. Like, yeah. that just unleashed a certain hell upon my ears that I fell in love with. And I'm like, okay, so it's nice and chuggy. And even live, I was like, oh. They are like, very good live. Live. Yeah, they're, they're excellent live. live. But, um, I need to see yeah nonetheless we were we were talking about a version's crown you well, what did you say your favorite album by them was uh I, i'm gonna get hate for this but servitude uh pirate's a better album right but servitude just kind of has a little bit of rawness and i don't know it just it connects with me how like raw it is so the riffs are a little more they're a little more techy definitely than tyrant yeah. tyrant's not very techy but uh, servitude i wouldn't even say they're techie they just have they sound like a tech riff they're more like that og deathcore style yeah where you have your harmonized like taps or like little sweeps and whatnot like yeah a tyrant is just more they're better songs well thought out song structure yeah. it's better produced I, th I think the riffs are better you might not agree but uh no, I, I would say they're actually better riffs. I just like how, like Praetorian, how that sounds. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, Servitude has a badass vibe. Yeah, it's, it's just it's it's a darker vibe. Yeah, but it's not like it's not a big difference. It's just like a slightly. It just feels more like I don't know, natural evil. Yeah, so I'm of a thing. I'm a sucker for good mixes though. As a engineer, I'm sure, a dude. I'm a sucker for really good mixes, and um, yeah, they're just that's why I like Tyrant more. I mean, it's, what's the art? The art, the art is ridiculous. the art is like industry standard alien core art now. It, it it's the best. It's like mothership over a city. Purple, yeah, purple. Yeah, purple. yeah. <laughs> purple. and then Metalcore had to go purple and blue because it was so cool. That's yeah. a direct copy, direct link, all of Metalcore copied a version scrap. That's Fair a enough. statement. <laughs> I'm being controversial, right? Now. Controversial. <laughs> hey, I don't call it controversial. I call it transparency. Okay. <laughs> like, there you go. Yeah. You're being I'm honest. Real, I'm real transparent about my musical opinions. And that's good. And like that that comes with that authentic yeah. authenticity. And I think that will kind of prevail into your social medias as well. Um, if like, you know, everybody anybody ever is like, and hey, you're a shit vocalist. We all know you're obsessed with diverted crowns. Like yeah so like you know get over it dude at least i have yeah. an inspiration at least i'm okay with being like this is vile revelation is for fans of a version's crown og thy art is murder whatever <laughs> like i'm honestly i'm kind of tired in our scene in our musical world of people being so afraid of the transparency as far as the four fans of algorithm like when they really only do that for marketing that way right maybe on spotify you have bands like thy artist murder spite fit for an autopsy right below it's like no dude song by song be like okay i heard this song this song this song this song these all contribute to this one track on this album boom like be that's a big natural. part of that's a big part of the way i write music yeah. like when i sit down to write whatever comes out is going to be like the culmination of whatever i listened to that day yeah like i'm pretty um what's the word for it like um malleable 
<laughs> that was the exact thing. Like, <laughs> like whatever I'm writing, oh, you guys are in a band. <laughs> pretty, pretty directly inspired by whatever I was listening to that day. We're we're pretty disturbingly musical, musically set. Similar. I can't talk. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a pen on paper, bud. It's okay. <laughs> but <laughs> when we get Google trains, wait, we need that. <laughs> we need yo. Imagine though, imagine people's musical language becomes so complex one day. You have Google Translate, and then you have like Beethoven Translate or some shit. Yeah, you know, like, you can like understand and like connect without That's disturbing what he other music. To get, to get his ideas, <laughs> yeah, to get my ideas across. I just told him. Like when I got here, I was like, man, I need to learn how to communicate. <laughs> I was like, I need to pick up the guitar and learn it again so right. I can tell you what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Because <laughs> it'll it'll be an encourage the cowardly dog. It'll be an hour yeah. of him like trying to explain an idea. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be like, I'll be like trying to play it on guitar. And he's like, no, that's not it. He's like, you gotta do this and this and this. Like, mm-hmm. What are you talking about? I I, I can't understand. I tell him to do stuff that isn't a thing. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> I'm like, okay, but he's the one with the big ideas, and I'm the one that like makes them real, makes them realistic. Yeah, yeah. No, I bring, I bring the vibe, and you bring the bring the energy, the possibility. Yeah, like, the possibility. Oh man, if you guys could hear the music in my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just means that, as opposed to, like I mentioned before, um, some people are just even afraid to compare themselves to other bands or test their. Uh, musical inspiration to other bands then after that comes the decision whether or not you want to try to distinguish yourself from other artists or like kind of just contribute to the scene contribute to the aesthetic that already exists right so for me it's like at this moment in time after cast from eden after of vultures and flesh i'm like okay so vile revelation they are trying to combine major aspects from franchise black and death core bands like Awaken Providence, Worm Shepherd, Lorna Shore, maybe even Shrine. But also, there's a wall right there because they're also trying to bring in inspiration from bands like OG, Thy Art is Murder, Aversion's Crown, maybe even Gamma Sector because those dudes are fun. Definitely. 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 Creating obscenities and ephemeral. I like Cast from Eden almost feels the same as ephemeral to me as how it's like. It's a seven minute long song. It just doesn't feel like it. Because it's paced yeah. so well. It's written so yeah. well. Yeah. Where like Gamma Sector has a huge breakdown and then it's immediately into like almost a different idea. Mm-hmm. But it, it doesn't feel like a seven minute song. Yeah. Just because of it's just like the, you're engaged the whole time. Yeah. Right. It's like, like making it an active. List. That was the big thing is that I didn't want to write a long song that just kind of drags out. Yeah, where yeah. you're almost waiting for it to be over, you know. Yeah, if if the song isn't over before you get the kind of like, how long have I been listening to this vibe? Yeah, like then I think that's where you kind of miss the mark. Where like the song just it kind of fits in that window. Like you might look at your phone and you're like, oh, it's been five minutes. Holy shit! Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a that's another thing is writing a song to where you don't want to overdo it. Yes. Um, and you would rather have your listener wanting more at the end of it than wishing there was less. You yes. Know? Um, so yeah, we that's a that's one thing that really weighs on me is making sure that I'm not overdoing anything, making sure to put an idea down, get it over with, and move on to something else instead of writing out an idea for longer than it should. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. it getting my music being stale is like the scariest idea for me like i i I can't even like i can't deal with that having stale music i would just i gotta have something interesting happening and that's part of why i'm I'm so hard on myself writing these songs that's a torture yeah that's the tortured artist syndrome right there you want to make sure that everything is as perfect as you can right. make it in the moment otherwise it's like why the fuck would i distribute this to major streaming platforms yeah it's tell like this is tell me why to bring them back down to reality where i'm like that part is fine if i heard that i wouldn't be like man this sucks i'd just be like okay that's a part of the song yeah right right now what what i'm picturing for you guys right now is like 
there, there's a there's a character and this Into is the, character. the brain yeah exactly exactly yeah. what i can imagine for you guys going to the near future is the aesthetic of a priest and you are confronting the priest or maybe you're in a dangerous situation with the priest and you find out that his human mask is actually like an alien mask because he's like slowly peeling it away like that's kind of the vibe i'm getting from vile revelation right now and i'm hoping to see some alien some secret alien or secret reptile priests from you guys in the future oh, oh. so um our ep that we're planning to do in june is conceptually all about uh alien conspiracies because um, yeah, yeah. i've never really seen any metal that's about strictly conspiracies um there's a lot of metal about aliens but the alien the conspiracy side of the the whole alien realm uh i'm a big fan of it so uh conspiracy theories here yeah yeah good shit. so uh we're gonna get into that uh on our next ep coming out fuck yeah and if like honestly if personally if i was in your shoes and i was known as the blackened slash alien death core band where the blackened aspect comes from the the treachery in of the real nature of right. religious ideology like for example like one of my one of my favorite conspiracy theories of all time is that most of the gods that we understand in this reality from various aliens. myths yeah they're yeah. all anunnaki yes, they're all yeah. <laughs> we're the fucking same person yeah so um, i i look forward to um i look forward to a band that plans and uh, yeah we have a song uh yeah. based around that concept we're doing a song about the hollow earth theory um a, a song about an abduction straight up alien abduction um it's gonna be fun i'm i'm excited to do the writing for this ep because i would i mean i would rather write about that than more i guess cookie cutter deathcore lyrics yeah um it's just yeah. so much more fun to me to write about something that i'm actually interested in well, yeah and then yeah. like it just it feels good like as a vocalist when you're performing to just have these big all-powerful like i'm omnipotent fucking yeah. moments like you just get to feel like a badass on stage yeah yeah and just to like have songs that if you read the lyrics it sounds totally crazy and unrealistic but at the core of it it's an idea that does come from reality yes you know um and i think that makes it a lot cooler than just writing about fictional aliens you yes know. exactly um, the grays or the reptiles the reptilians the insectoids right. it's like it's something that's more based in reality but can kind of expand on it yeah um, yeah yeah that's a lot of fun for me to write about bro we're taking the extra step deep on conspiracy theories now <laughs> <laughs> well honestly dude one of my favorite that's bands of all time silent planet one thing yeah. that they always do with their lyrical material is they have you di diving down rabbit holes and right. like basically there are certain stanzas that are numbered and they relate to books they relate to events mm -hmm. i want to see more bands do that in our yeah, scene that's kind of what we're going to be going for fuck yes yes yeah. um and therefore you guys are definitely going to like basically what is going to be the bring me the horizon level notoriety like once we get to that notoriety um the album cover is going to remind you the beatles but the true nature of it is going to be talking about stuff like that and i can right. I, I don't give a fuck about mentioning because it's probably not going to be released for the next five years if if not longer um i'll probably have a beard down to my nads by the time we're preparing to release that album but um the name of it would be our bright world and its many shadows That's and sense. yeah like and the whole idea behind that is just like you guys said just exploring the disturbing depths which is like one of the tracks um track names that i'm planning out and that's just an intro to what is the rest of the album so i think i think i'm going to be getting you boys both featured on one of the tracks for that in the future that's going to be awesome. really really fun um so <laughs> of course we're all probably adhd in the session so tangents we love <laughs> yeah. it but also I'm it also makes for hella that. content it makes for hella content so yeah we were um i think we got to either the second character or the third character in your five brandon I so think let's go ahead the second character. why is it a emergence crown yep alex kohler yeah. alex kohler that's like i didn't ever want to do highs man i never wanted to do highs uh 
all I was listening to a Virgin's Crown, Waking the Cadaver. Like I really liked the guttural sound of the pink squeals and stuff. Um and then I Chelsea Grin just the uh, Desolation of Eden, uh the album and the song, my favorite things from Chelsea Grin. And they just had that melodic nature, but then Alex's highs being so like yes. piercing. Iconic, yeah. And yeah, they're iconic. And they're not like technically insane or like super profound. It's not vocal Olympics. Yeah, it's not yeah. vocal vocal Olympics. It was it sounds like, like a Blair really, Witch. Really <laughs> solid basics. Yeah. It is. Well, I wouldn't call it solid basics. I just call it like it 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 like formed together well. Mm-hmm. Right. I would say that before there was Adam Mercer and what he contributed to most of the songs off of Eternity with um, what even DeAndre Tyre kind of describes as witchy highs. Before him, absolutely, Alex Kohler. He had those yeah. Blair Witch highs that I can just yeah. never forget. Yep. Yeah. They don't feel good to do. And <laughs> They're not I going to. Notice <laughs> that I kind of have that same... No, it's not to the extent of his, the voiciness and the highs. Mm-hmm. Like you can just kind of hear my voice. You kind of have a screechy sound. Yeah, yeah. It's more nail against the chalkboard than like mm-hmm. a lot of the highs aren't really shrill. That's the that's yeah, a good shrill. Word. That's a good. They're, they're very atmospheric. They sound pretty, like Will Ramos. Like yeah. know it, like if he's not doing a tunnel on it, like it, it's very pretty and not piercing. And depth core to me is kind of supposed to be a little abrasive to the ear. Um, Hence it's the supposed to be disturbing. space death core, like callback, just the dissonant mm-hmm. harmonies and stuff like that. Um, the poor sweeps. I don't know. This is like <laughs> yeah. there's a rawness. I I never ho- heard a good sweep pick section in any my space death core song, and I fucking loved it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like everything is poorly recorded. It's yeah. not mixed well. Yeah. But that's it is like by choice. But dude. that's the atmosphere. Yeah. Like that's the vibe. And it yeah, it just makes it a lot more relatable, I guess. Yeah, it's it's not as uh it doesn't make you feel like a movie, right? It feels like you're yeah. locked in some dude's dirty basement, <laughs> like fearing for your life. And he's making you listen to his shitty set. Yeah. <laughs> you're not yeah, leaving until we listen to old like, Kelsey Grin. <laughs> you're yeah. preying down on the floor and all you hear <laughs> fucking my damn nation play. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, I, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, that's going to be in my future. I can definitely say to um, vocalist to vocalist that when it comes to your vocal spectrum so far, it's definitely, I think it's meant to cater more to um, slamming deathcore at this time. But I can hear the yeah. Alex Kohler inspiration in your highs yeah. for sure. So, I, I'm how to put it. Uh, we, we very much make music for ourselves. Like, yeah, <laughs> we, we oh, it should always be done. Anybody's listening, yeah. we're gonna sit in here and fucking geek out with the monitors. Uh, that's kind of like what Ectogasm was. Definitely. Is we we wrote songs in like 45 minutes, had this big long sample intro, and then we're just like, what's something ridiculous we can do that's probably never good and try to make it sound listenable as like grindy core. Yeah. And it, it's I don't know. We just it's just fun, man. We 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 have fun. Not everything makes the cut for the seriousness. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Like behind the scenes, we're fucking goofballs. Yeah, and that's how it should be. Like, yeah. if you're if you're taking your art artistic medium too seriously, and like basically Isaac is on the is on the the, <laughs> I would compare, I would say he's on the cusp of being a little bit too serious. But like at that's the same time, yeah. because, that's yeah. not it. Yeah. But <laughs> the best part is, is he still has a little bit of respect for me, so I can talk him into doing ridiculous stuff that like is fun. Yeah. Like maybe it doesn't make the cut, but I make them try it. Yeah, and sometimes it just, I'll, I'll give it a try. For some, the most part. Sometimes it just it works out. Yeah, yeah, and that comes. And you see that a few times on the album. Oh, uh, where there's just like we we're, we're doing a breakdown, and he's like, "Oh, just let me do the whatever, <laughs> whatever weird noise he's, he wants to do." Yeah, I'm like, you know, we got to do <laughs> we got to do something real, you know. And then and I, I track it, and it's uh, yeah, yeah. I give him the chance, and it ends up sounding really cool. And that's what's that, important. That that's we we layer that a lot. So if you ever hear it's just like a wet popping sound, that's what's happening. Yeah, 
Like you may not even hear it, but it's in there. I'm I'm giving you all a little wet willy. Same time. <laughs> no, good shit. Good shit creatively. And that's what makes it like for <clears throat> for most people who pardon me, who aren't um they aren't acclimated to listening to Deathcore Grind Core Slam on a regular basis. That is the stuff that makes it borderline not listenable. That's but also I mean. it adds more profile and it contributes to the culture that we have Just, before us, all the bands before. Yeah, he, he's very much like the logical thinking person of us when it comes musically and i'm very more just like a fuck it we ball kind of but then <laughs> it works it, it works, works together well we're like yeah. we're like two cartoon characters yeah because he doesn't turn into lucas man and i don't turn into trapped okay no i don't think that's the comparison i want okay to like, i don't i don't turn into like goofball like it's not just goofy music doing whatever yeah it's like it checks and balances yeah it comes out to where it's like it's fun but like it's also it's good yeah it's good and it's fun anything we make where he's not full production mode on it and i'm i have to say so yeah it, it's not good but it's real fun yeah yeah and that's that's always what's important is that yeah. if you have one side of the coin that's a little bit more serious and wants to make so things funny. more logical then you have the other side of the coin. He's like, nah, fuck you. We're going to try to expand and make vile revelation. What right. Is, right. I'm and sure, therefore I'm you sure have that challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Creatively speaking, speaking, but... yeah creative speak, creatively speaking, Brandon ends up being um, the adversary to um, yes. Isaac's <laughs> logical creative mind. We, we get into so many arguments it'll in the be, studio. It'll be an <laughs> hour and a half of us arguing over where a pinch harmonic should be. <laughs> you know, like, like, I'm like, no, we're not putting it on. Well, I don't say the three because I'm stupid. Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, we're not putting it on the two. We're putting it on the three. And I'm like, fuck you. Put it on the one and the two and the four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how it is. <laughs> but that always provides challenge and it always like it pushes yeah out. i provide a lot of challenge yes you do <laughs> and sometimes sometimes the uh, vocal recording gets a little rough too yeah. <laughs> oh man we were what song was it was it upon the gates we had to track it in like three sessions i think there was one line in the chorus oh, on i was so pissed we spent <laughs> We spent probably three or four hours trying to take this one line because <laughs> I had a certain way that I wanted it to sound. He had, he, he had a lot of triple flow in it, but it was in a spot where I wouldn't do it. Like, yeah. I myself would not say it like that. And I just, like, I couldn't make myself say it. I just got pissed. And I'm like, like, he couldn't, like, comprehend the idea I was trying to get across. Yeah. And we it spent was a long, so long, long time, too. But we ended up scrapping the idea anyway. And then, then we changed it, and it, I got it, like, first take on yeah. it. That, that tends to happen quite a bit. But I think it, I think it uh, makes for a better product in the yeah. end. Where, where it's still, like, it sounds like me saying it. Right. Like it, it still ends up in how I would say something, how I would interpret it. It's as if it was written, like as if I wrote it, as if I was experiencing it. Fair enough. Okay. So yeah. let's go ahead and continue and kind of wrap up uh, your five characters. And then we so can I'm going to go four five. and five. And I'm just going to like name a clump of people. I'm going to use their Facebook names because I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> dox anybody that doesn't want to be doxed. <laughs> That's so, uh, Dio, uh, DiGiorno, DiGiorno, I don't the Giovanna. I'm not saying that. Uh, absolute homie. Um, we got to meet him over the last year, which was really cool. Uh, and we've always, I don't know, we just always kind of clicked. Yeah. Clicked. He, he definitely, he has, he has the vibe. Definitely. For sure. Uh, he's an awesome dude. Uh, Alec from Slaughter the False Prophet, like being one of my first vocal friends. Like in there. Uh, I, yeah, I yeah. heard uh Rituals of Sin and I just like lost my mind and was like posting it everywhere, <laughs> like every three hours, like some like hyper fans. Yep. And, yeah. I made him listen to it like 50 times. But, yeah, uh, fair enough. Uh, absolutely cool. <laughs> uh, screamy Mimi. 
uh, he's been he's been pretty chill. Big Snapchat homie. We we <laughs> send a lot of goofy faces to each other. Hell yeah, dude! Uh, That's awesome. Oh, I'm forgetting so many people now. Are you naming the features? Uh, oh, oh, Cole. Uh, <laughs> I'm Aaron, uh, found him and confront the elder, and we just kicked it off. And then, like, our musical vibes are very similar yeah. in like what we like. Um, all the boys in Envy, uh, in the CKV Records group. Yes, that, that's sick. Oh, that's that's like my musical family, and I like it. I didn't even realize they were all connected. Yeah, it's like all people I like. Uh, Drake Campbell. Um, we we've talked a ton. Yeah. Um, fuck, I'm forgetting a name. It's, I'm forgetting it's so, a lot of names. There, there's just so many people like the little community we've built where we just like organically also stumbled into all the same friends yeah. and like i don't know it, it's really cool everybody's chill we get a lot of music rights back and forth we're always loving each other's posts yeah. i don't know it's it's always just, just sending demo mixes back and forth yeah it, it, i don't know it's just kind of like we kind of click with the black and deathcore underground yeah. but then we're also just like I'm just a slam hyper fan. So like I'm always just any slam band. Any anybody that makes slam, you can send me your demos. Uh that's to me personally, Brandon O'Neill on Facebook. Send me your demos and message. I will listen to every demo. Good shit. Yeah, I love the fact <laughs> that, too that's that. A, my thought process is good yep. miserable. You're yeah. not good. <laughs> I'm, not even, I'm barely banking. Honestly, too, it's it's very interesting to know that everybody in this call as well is also so interconnected with all these other artists. I mean, we've had an yeah, interview on the show. We've yeah. had Song of the False Prophet on the show. Yeah. And but now even, we're... We have a up? ton of mutual friends. Exactly. But, yeah. yeah, and it's like... <clears throat> like, we all... Like, like, know the each thing other. is, I, I, like, I'll get in one of your comment sections on Facebook or vice versa, and everybody in your comments is someone that I know... Be yeah. our friends with, and the same with you. Yeah, like it's just cool to be part of that community where it's like everybody kind of knows each other, everybody exactly. interacts with each other. But it's just all like uplifting stuff. There's no drama between us or anything. No, we're all just like, oh fuck yeah, send me that. Oh this and that. Yeah. Like even sharing assets, mm -hmm. like stems or something, like stuff like that. Uh, I definitely. I've sent uh, many times where we tracked something, we had a demo, and I was like, I don't know if I like how this sounded or if I should do a different style in this pattern or this or that. And I would send it to like 15 people in this group, and they'd all give me like good, full blown, honest you, feedback. Yeah, good, honest feedback, but like detailed also. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's always the beauty of it. And it's it's been really charming to, um, if if slowly, you know, if not slowly, steadily, um, kind of develop this relationship with all of um, all of you guys, whether it be um, those in Enviralent, those in Vile Revelation, Solder, the False Prophet, um, Necrophilic Beatdown now of Ruin. Like it's it's just so cool to kind of build that legacy. And that's also the beauty of hosting yeah. a podcast like this is over time, man, like even if there are certain issues that you have with certain people over time, like, oh, whatever. Um, over time, it's like, nonetheless, you you put in the time, you get to know people. You're not only networking with them, but you're having conversations with them. You're homies with them. It's there's just a there's just a beauty to that, and I've been really proud to, um, for what it's worth, kind of attribute contribute to what is now in VCKB and all the artists associated with that. Yeah. Last rated enemy records, unique leader records, now even Century Media records. It's like. It's it's really cool to get to know all these artists, and then, for example, when you guys pop through town, it's like we can share a drink, we can share, we can go to right. fucking Waffle House or Little Caesars, and it can be absolutely normal. You don't really get that experience unless you're like in in the inner workings of a cult for artists like Post yeah, Malone, Drake. Yeah, yeah. we're definitely a cult. Like, <laughs> we're, we're definitely a cult. Yeah, we should be on a watch list. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> I'm just, you, you gotta watch us. Yeah, no, fair enough. So if anything, um, being that Brandon contributed and provided his five characters, Isaac, your turn, man. Unleash it. Um, 
I'm going to, for my first one, I'm going to give three. Actually, I'm going to give four. And they were uh, my high school teachers. Um, this was before, uh, I guess, when I was first starting in my, starting my first musical endeavors. Um, four of my high school teachers were all either um, played in bands, played guitar, uh, were into metal. Um, so... Shout out to uh, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Bogue, Mr. Lazuski, and Mr. Boswell. Um, like when I would, I mean, this was the only thing I would talk about to anyone that would listen when I was in school. And um, like my English teacher, Mr. Boswell, I would talk to him about tours and he would give me advice on like how to make touring comfortable and um, doing that stuff because he experienced it and done all that. Um, so having them as inspirations and kind of guides when I was first starting out was a really cool thing. And I still interact with them um, with my music uh, these days, which is really cool to still like I've had some of them come out to shows before, which is a really cool thing. Um, that is really cool. So, um, so yeah, to shout out to all of them for, uh, you know, sticking around and um inspiring me when I was younger and just first starting out. Um, I don't I don't care how corny it is. My second character is definitely Lorna Shore. Oh, yeah. Um, I found Lorna Shore right after Flesh Coffin came out. I think that was in 2017. Long time um, and that album changed my life. Um, that album is the reason that I love Black and Death Core. It um, and then Immortal came out and it blew my mind. Uh, I think Immortal is probably my favorite Death Core it, album ever. Um, it's too good. It's too good. Yeah, it's it's, just, it's perfect. Um, yeah, it's close. It's close to perfect. Maybe for you. <laughs> I think mean, if you would have yeah. just like moved Godmaker onto that album and then gave it that production, mm -hmm. it would be perfect. Um, but yeah, those uh, Lauren Shore was definitely the biggest part of my inspiration starting Vile. Um, and in school, I did a lot of music classes, um, a lot of classical, uh, like classical training in music, um, like orchestral, symphonic stuff that like i was in college music theory classes um for a few years and that was all i mean you don't you don't write metal music in those classes you're writing orchestra and you're writing symphonies so that is metal exactly so i mean it's i wouldn't say that it's because of the black and death core fad that that's why i love doing it but it's because that's what the majority of my musical training was was writing for an orchestra um and i don't care if that style of black and death core goes out of style that's what i'm gonna do because that's what i mean that's where my training comes from and that's what i mean that's the biggest reason that i love this genre is because of just the atmosphere and the meshing of two different styles um I love it. Um, for my third character, I'm probably gonna uh, shout out Caden Romig. <laughs> Logan. Um, he's our <laughs> rhythm player in Vile. Uh, he couldn't make it onto the onto the call, unfortunately. But yeah, what the um, fuck, Caden? Just kidding, love you. <laughs> <laughs> we say that a lot. We say that a lot. Fuck you, um, he's the one in the band. He's kind of the punching bag for everyone in the band. <laughs> Me specifically. Um, Brandon specifically. <laughs> but um, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today if it weren't for him. Um, I met Caden, I think it was sophomore year of high school. Um, and of course, being from a small town and a high school of 200 kids um he that's, was the only yeah. other he was the only other kid that was into metal he was the only other kid that played guitar so we kind of had to hang out yeah. <laughs> um, and um it was under a universal his, contract that <laughs> yeah him being a couple years younger than me 
and watching him always improve at guitar pushed me to always get better at it because I can't fathom the thought of him being better than me, which is why I still, <laughs> which is why I still practice. Hey, <laughs> um, that's for you, Kate. And um, we just love giving him shit. Um, I love Kate. See, so yeah, I have to have to shout out Caden. Um, let's see, Alex. Definitely gonna say um, Alex Knight. He's our merch guy, but he's mm. so much more than that. Yeah, for sure. Um, he came out to the first, or oh, was it the second show? He came to the second one with me. The second show that we ever played, that he came the out. First day I met him too. Um, we picked him up uh, and drove him to the show, as you have to do sometimes as a local yeah. band. Yeah. Um, and he stayed for the set. He loved it. And he hasn't missed a show since. He's always been there. He travels with us. He's in our group chat. Yeah. Um, we don't make decisions without Alex. We don't, yeah, we don't make decisions without Alex. Cheeseburger. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's he's one of the one of the big forces that keeps us going. He's one of our best friends. Right? He's definitely one of my best friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we would be this band without Alex, even with him not. I mean, he did feature on this album, and I'm glad that we could include him in the yeah. music. Um, but yeah, he's he's a big part of Vival. Yeah. Um, so definitely glad to have him around. Um, let's see two more. Forgive the awkward silence as I uh, <laughs> you're work on, you're through the, you're this. On the spotlight. It's okay. Um, <laughs> let's see i'll probably give a shout out to um justin powell okay um, he was um the first vocalist i ever found to do the cast from eden ep with me um that was before vile ha had ever even been concepted is that a word um yeah see you can see right yeah <laughs> um, genius uh he was he was the vocalist for that band we never actually recorded anything never put any music out but he was the one to sit me down and tell me hey you could probably write some better songs um, <laughs> and i think that's a big part of why i'm so picky about my songwriting and i don't think that any of my music would be would be as good as it is without justin just being real with me um and even if we don't live close to each other or we never put out any music i still talk to him quite a bit um we still interact with each other's bands and um he's been a good friend of mine since 2020 probably josh too and josh as well shout out to josh um my last character i already said lauren shore but I am gonna say Adam D'Amico. Yeah. Because I wouldn't be the guitar player I am today without the work of Adam D'Amico. <laughs> Dean Lamb. Um I would say Dean Lamb, but I can't even play those riffs. <laughs> um, <laughs> it took me that part of the easiest one to but, um when I first moved to Columbia, Missouri, we didn't have Wi-Fi for about two weeks. Um so I had nothing to do. And I sat around and learned learned Lorna Shore riffs for two weeks straight. And at that point in my guitar playing, I was kind of at a plateau between like, I don't want to say advanced, but like in intermediate and advanced level playing. I've been at a plateau for a couple of years probably. And forcing myself to learn those riffs from Adam was probably the biggest jump I've ever made in my skill level on guitar. Um, so yeah, That's a whole lot to Adam. Um, just learning his riffs is a huge part of my guitar playing. Right. Even if I can't write something similar that hits <laughs> the same mark, um, he keeps me on my toes. For yes, sure. Right. And like, that's the thing too, is very similar to yourself. Adam D'Amico is constantly pushing himself. He's constantly right. struggling. 
and even with pain remains like immortal he's like wow is this like the best stuff we can write and then the band's like no 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 no, no. i know you can write better just play faster or whatever exactly and that's, that's <laughs> how pain play, remains play came into view. Fast. yeah yeah like same thing that slipknot does man and that's why that's also why they're one of those industry standards is you listen to their material you listen to the recorded albums like for example one song i can mention would be custer um when they played oh, yeah. um they of the gusano their mexico festival like back in i think 2018 or 19 and they quite literally played custer one point times faster than the than what they fucking recorded like that shit's inspiring that shit's yeah. inspiring even despite how old they are like they're still doing it and it's the reason right. why it's it's one of many validations for you're not old. You're just getting older. You can't call yourself old until you get into your triple digits. And it's because of bands like Slipknot specifically. Yeah, I mean, Metallica just won a Grammy. And exactly. they're in their 70s. Exactly. So, still better than Spirit Box. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I have strong opinion, opinions about Spirit Box. I love that band. Um, but, you know, everybody has their own opinion. So um, l- let me pick your brain about that then. I'm, I'm curious. Like, what what what's your what's your spiel about spear box, my friend? Uh, Krista killed I wrestled. Not Krista Courtney killed I wrestled a bear once, and I can never forgive her for that because that band went from like chaotic ball of energy to like robotic with like a small burst of fun as like a teaser. I don't know. I just paddle. What was it? Boat paddles. From Courtney or karate nipples? No, karate nipples was. I don't fucking like remember. That. Whatever. It, it like <laughs> that's before my time. The vibe from like the Krista albums to the Courtney albums are so drastically different. Uh, now the guitarist in Spirit Box, I do really yes. like. Uh, I love their instrumentals. Yeah, because uh, oh fuck, what's the name of that band? Life forms. Yeah, life forms. Uh, Go listen to the one. I, th- I think it's one Life Forms album. Uh, multi-dimensional on there is just insane. Just the writing, like it's it's very gent inspired. Gent deathcore. Yeah, I, I, it's it's almost still metalcore. And it's no, it's deathcore. It's, it's deathcore. Death death sure. uh, but it's like it's kind of like the predecessor to what a lot of deathcore was. Um, yeah but they never really got big but every every thing the guitarist has been in has been good yeah like i wrestled a bear once was insane like i just haven't heard anything bad from him i'm just a big courtney hater that she killed what like, that was like my favorite band in high school right so like when she left it's like why why the fuck did you leave this one you were doing something good and now you're doing cleans fuck you like you know yeah um, <laughs> i i completely understand and the only the only part of that like okay i correct my word to acknowledge i could acknowledge that yeah. because i myself haven't listened to that much i wrestled the bear once um because i was yeah <laughs> I was never a part of the MySpace deathcore era. That's definitely more or less uh, Finn's um, Finn's fans. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, that was before my time. I would, I would say I was more in the metalcore at that time, and then I got into the deathcore like a few years after. But yeah. like it, it, it all had the scene influence on it. Right. Then that, I, I know that's what kind of like drew me into it. I was Fair a angsty teenager. Yeah, I, I would say that my main thing, the reason that I love Spirit Box so much right now is because they, they're they definitely a metalcore band, and it's very atmospheric. For me, Spirit Box, like literally when I listen to it, I think of like supernatural investigators with the Spirit Box, and they're like trying to listen out for voices, and every now and then one pokes out, and it's like that atmosphere. Um, I forgot the song. They, it, it's off of the the fear of fear ep that they released last year um i think it's void i'm not sure um i think it was the first track that it was the first track they released that one just like it makes me like want to do that because it like i I can see the visuals and the visuals that they have provided are pretty good testament to it but it's just very atmospheric and 
Courtney, I think, is like one of the best female vocalists. But I call I call them vocalesses, even though you know the less suffix. It's like, oh, do you think female vocalists are less than male vocalists? I'm like, no, no, no. Everything has like Mister, Mistress, you know, Mistress. Right. The same thing. Same type of logic. So, Courtney Laplante, Tatiana Shemaluk, and uh, Yasmin from Face Yourself are probably some of my favorite uh, vocalesses in the underground uh, music world. Uh, uh, Murder Float. Murder yeah, Float. Yes. Yeah. Brittany. 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 Uh, yeah. Brittany. Simone, yes. Um, and the band's name. Oh my god. Brian's gonna be pissed at me that I forgot this. It's the slam band. Stabbed? Stabbing. No, that's uh stabbing. that's Bridget, but I fuck with stabbing. Yeah. They they <laughs> have I got every single one of their releases. Uh the shirt that I wore on like every tour and show we've done. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely uh, wanting to get them on the show. Yeah, they said. Oh, what the fuck is the name of this band? I'm having a moment. One I found recently, not to like distract you. There's um, Dawn of Ouroboros. That's a new one. Oh there's yeah, a wake, yeah. There's a Awake Consciousness, which they're based the over in Spain. They're oh, really yeah. good. The bit Simone from uh, I think that's how you say her name from Cerebral Boar. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, she's like brutal death. Yeah, but they got some slams in there too. But they're uh, she infinitely better than I am. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, fuck, I forgot. Um, I forgot her band name. But uh, Natalie, we played a show in Michigan together, and uh, I want to <laughs> say it was like, it's, is it Phil Spewer? Fuck, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, absolutely insane. One of the best stage presences I've seen in a long time for like Black and Deathcore, especially. Oh, sick. Okay. Yeah. So not Cerebral Bore, though. This is a different one? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll look her up real quick. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know link what, me that uh, shit. what band it is. Definitely link me that shit on Facebook. Yeah, Phil, Phil, Phil Stewart, Realm of Shield is oh, Realm yeah, of yeah. Shield. Oh my god! Ooh, that's a sick band name too. Yeah, it is. Uh, did, did you have the stage presence too? Just the hair draped down, like Blair Witch style. Very, Ooh, very, very okay. creepy. It, you said Realm of um, Realm of Realm Shield. Of Shield. Shield. Like, as in S H E O L. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sick. Definitely can remember that name. Um. That sounds really cool. Um, I think I think I think you had one more. Oh, Brittany for Murder Afloat. Oh, right. Okay. Hell yeah. All right. Well, gentlemen, <laughs> it is that. currently five fifty-seven p.m. for me over here in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm pretty sure it's like seven fifty-seven for y'all, or yes, something sorry. very close. Yeah. It's so we're we're definitely getting into the the later afternoon with this session, but that's what we're all about. Like as long as the conversation is authentic and there's a mutual mm -hmm. sense of engagement, we're not trying to speed run the material. That's right. what about there's no speed running with me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pokemon, I'll fuck you up. It's a Pokemon speed running. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad I haven't touched Pokemon, so you'd have every advantage. <laughs> oh, <I'm, laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a Pokemon nerd. <laughs> I wish I was a Pokemon nerd. I just never got into it. Um, yeah. Closest thing I got to that was maybe... I did play some Pokemon, but he's, Fair enough. I gave him Scarlet like a year and a half ago. He still hasn't beat it. I, I almost beat it. Just like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> the closest thing I can get to Pokemon would be the Fate series. And that's like that's not even yeah. a game that's an anime series. Because it's a very similar concept to me. It's like summoning heroes from ancient times instead of... Uh, Alien animals, Japanese animals, or whatever. Yeah, um, I was in Yu Gi Oh. I fucked with Yu Gi Oh too. Austin really fucks with Yu Gi Oh. I know. Our bases, big Yu Gi Oh player. I played Pokemon trading card game. Uh, we, we got a bunch of nerds. That's He's good. a conspiracy theory nerd. <laughs> Alex is a weeb. Yep. That's where the best music yeah. comes from. He exactly, the metalcore nerd. Yeah, <laughs> and he gets the brunt of everything for listening to metalcore. Yeah. 
I don't even hate metalcore. Yeah, I don't hate metalcore. I just hate his metalcore. Yeah, like if he likes it, I probably don't. Yeah, like ancient asking Alexandria or some shit. This, this I, like, I do like old. I, I like like that era. I can get into some of that. I, I, I like knocked loose, especially. I'm gonna. There's their metalcore now. They used to be hardcore. I don't care what anybody has to say. That's a factual statement. That's a controversial statement. But no, it's not. How are they metalcore now, though? They got metal riffs. I would say that they're new. They're just metallic hardcore. Not like what we yeah, would call yeah. metalcore today, but like where it was hardcore with metal influences. Okay, that, that's that's a better yeah. description. Because when I think of yeah. metalcore, I think of like For the Fallen Dreams or While She Sleeps. Yeah. Art, I, 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 I'm almost to the point of like a harm's way type metalcore. Uh, where it's I, metallic no. hardcore yeah. instead of yeah. being... yeah. But I, I just want mm. it in the same name because it is metal core, that. Metal core is such a blanket term. Yeah, metal core is probably the most broad genre in yeah. music outside of EDM genres. For me, metal core, like the important way to distinguish metal core is almost a religious, um, more specifically monotheistic ambience um, behind yeah. synth, EDM, and then metal core as it started out. For me, metallic hardcore, like varials orthodox um i used to think body snatcher was metallic hardcore but then i realized they were deathcore um kublai khan oh, yeah. definitely metallic hardcore um they just got some fucking meat on their bones some texan I do, meat. yeah i do like that fucking down tempo beat down deathcore like body yeah. snatcher like that vibe body snatcher is the best at it but i'm, I'm really in the pale face pale face is pale really face, like baby snuffed on site though Snuff on site is pretty insane. Yeah, I hear blunt cough and I'm killing that. everybody. Oh man, blunt cough. I is... was running around and just yell the intro vocal <laughs> and repeated like, like some sort of like primate. Yeah, nice. I am a primate, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, I do believe that will be um because I mean I think I attempted to transition to the second part of the podcast earlier, but then there are tangents. I do whatever. <laughs> I do <that. laughs> no, it's okay. I it, it it definitely provides me challenge as well as far as like guiding the session forward per se. Keep so it on track. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, keep it on you track. Keep exactly. Keep me in the box. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> um so getting into the second half of the session for tonight, speaking with Isaac Clarkson and Brandon O'Neill for this session, for the sake of the session from Vile Revelation, a to be conspiracy theory based blackened slash alien death core um, project that I have. A, I have a good feeling that because bands like Gamma Sector have like more or less kind of walked away from the alien death core and instead, well, they're bluegrass <laughs> death metal. Um, I think that you guys will definitely be helping the scene project into the future, if not major projects like A Night in Texas, um, Hopefully. Yeah. The Crown, like those types of bands. I think you guys yes, are definitely yes. going to be pushing the alien yeah. deathcore genre forward, but also mixing the black and ignite the church influences in. So I look forward to the future definitely. of your discography proceeding from the point of cast from Eden, which we just listened to. That'll be releasing at the end of February. I'm excited for everybody else to hear it, as well as the features incorporated. Now, getting to the second half of the session, basically, I'm going to force you both to depersonalize. I'm going to be questioning you both as vile revelation. We are one collective brain. Exactly. So, I mean, it already works out pretty organically. It's not exactly an ambush. I'm not like, uh, you guys are going to be torn apart, like torn in half. Um, but instead, now we're speaking to you guys as vile revelation. So, Again, if you've had the opportunity to check out any of our previous podcast episodes, um, the second half of the session will be labeled band. It'll be labeled music or just talking um, everything clickbait about the band. And then we will be doing under the skin of cast from Eden. Starting off, being that we have the two primary brains, the two primary minds of vile revelation in session, my first question would have to be in regards to any clickbait experience. Imagine being at a show and you have people walking up to your merch table. They're drenched in sweat. Maybe they're missing a tooth because someone's approached me missing a tooth after introducing themselves. That was fucked. Um, they approach you. They're all they're all exhausted and they ask you the most clickbait question of all. Why why vile revelation? Where did that come from? What is the purpose behind the band? Okay. This is really corny. It is corny. Um, so at, around the time it. Um, Around the time we had to start thinking about a name for the band, 
Um, I've always been into uh, tech death, big thing of mine. And um, in theory, had just recently released an album called Vile Genesis. Um, and if you know anything about the Bible, Genesis is the first book of the Bible. And Revelation is the last book. So we pretty much co-opted their band name. And uh, <laughs> instead of being the first book of the Bible, we were the last book. So we took Vile Genesis and made Vile Revelation out of it. Sick. And since then, because you guys have now released two EPs, you've released multiple standalone singles, and because of the intended trajectory, lyrically and musically speaking, with you guys wanting to descend into the dirk, the the dirk, um, the deep, dark, disturbing depths of the world, talking about conspiracy theories and possibly having aliens and blackened um, elements kind of collide. Like I mentioned earlier, the the priest who peels off his face and instead he's an insectoid, he's a reptilian or some shit. I'm sure you guys will figure that out and um, provide imagery, provide aesthetic that parallels to that. Since then, and since you now have this roadmap for the future, is there any other backstory or lore that you have been able to provide or perhaps conjure from these thought out ideas for the future the future of your discography has the meaning changed for you guys and perhaps how does vile revelation connect with that blackened alien death core mashup well to me i think like first encounter would be a vile revelation like you're not alone yeah right that's the way i've been able to kind of morph the name of the band into something that didn't really mean anything to uh, we're talking about conspiracies and yeah. like you will have a vile revelation yeah. when you learn the, these truths you know that's kind of the way i've i've morphed the meaning to me anyway um and hopefully we can translate that like the 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 intention of the name <laughs> i think um, later for sure yeah but um yeah hopefully we can get that across um and people make memes about it. Some not memes, but in the comment section, you know, we're all about to have a vile revelation. <laughs> um, but that's what I'm hoping to kind of morph that name into, um, to like uh, connect it with the concepts that we want to talk about, um, and make it make sense, and not just be a a random name that popped up out of inspiration from another band's album right so we were talking about it a lot before we were talking about the willingness to attribute tribute mention bands beforehand in the scene who already have their own histories and legacies being open to comparing your music to them for the sake of creative inspiration. Right. Now, mostly Vile Revelation on public domain is known as a blackened deathcore band. Now, with you guys having that label, but over time, hoping to maybe tribute to a version's crown, or maybe even Rings of Saturn, um, who knows? Who knows what the future holds, right? We don't know. Um, maybe in the, in the future, perhaps, trying to jam in just really tech death riffs or anything that kind of projects and pushes for the more alien based theme. How do you guys feel that vile revelation contributes to the, the genre black and death core, but what helps it distinguish from other bands? Would it solely be your intended conspiracy um, themes well, like, how does Vile Revelation kind of separate itself from the rest while it's, not, while it's not doing it in a toxic way? Like, fuck all these bands. We're not trying to be deathcore, right. but we also label, our, label ourselves as black and deathcore. Like, how, how, do you, how do you put yourself in that situation? How do you distinguish but also contribute? So, yeah, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that, like, first, we just kind of have a different vibe, right? Uh, instead of being like very specifically black and deathcore as the genre, we like black metal. We like death metal. We like deathcore. So we like very much try to strip those down to like their base elements. 
where we want a part to sound extremely black metally. Um, like that's like the first three minutes of cast from Eden mm -hmm. is very much we're trying to like strip it down. Like, yeah, you know there's a breakdown coming and you don't know when. So we we just want to stretch that out as long as possible to where you're like anticipating like a black metal vibe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you're you're wanting you're wanting more, I guess. I don't know. It it just creates the same atmosphere as the black metal does to me or atmospheric black metal. Um, but then we we definitely have our deathcore moments where we're it's just very generic to the deathcore point. And then uh we've been incorporating death metal breakdowns, uh slams uh from slam, uh lots of death metal riffs too, especially black and death riffs. Mm -hmm. uh, we just like we've stripped it down to a general basic, I guess. Yeah. Each yeah, separate genre. genre. Yeah. And then kind of trying to mesh all of those yeah. at once. Um, yeah. And in the future, to kind of evolve on that idea, um, we're looking to get heavier, um, maybe less, um, even less melodic, maybe um, less maybe even less um i don't want to say less atmospheric but less um where the atmosphere is the focus over the yeah probably yes. that yeah. Um, over being an effect we're looking to be heavier just in general more chugs more like, breakdown yeah effigy was a good example we have the song structure is this chugged breakdown as a verse yeah into a down tempo riff into a breakdown Yep. Into the chug to break down verse into a breakdown. Yeah. Um but like it's just we're uh actually looking to Oceano yeah. for a lot of reference uh for our newer stuff and inspiration. Um they're probably my favorite deathcore band. Um I love their ideas. And if you if you read their lyrics, their concepts are pretty on par with what we are looking to do in the future um but those real chuggy parts those just generally heavy um but i'll always keep my orchestra and i'll always keep my choirs and all that on all that because that's just that's part of what makes it fun for me yeah um but like to distinguish from other black and death core bands uh to put it simply uh more chuggy less riffy maybe um that might uh make it less interesting like at face level but if you can just kind of turn the brain off and get with it you know yeah. uh i think it'll definitely translate better live for sure um because i think live people would rather hear chugs and breakdowns than you know one of those riffs where you're standing there staring at your guitar yeah um so I don't know. I think um, just the way that we write music and will continue to stands apart from Black and Deathcore as a whole um, pretty well already, at least in my opinion. But um, we're just looking to keep crafting our own kind of like sub, sub, sub genre of that style you know alien yeah conspiracy core yeah, yeah. <laughs> the alien conspiracy core you hear it here honestly first. yeah like vile vi like vile revelation um as i mentioned before and more or less alluded to and i'm more or less milking the niche um it is perhaps bleakness accompanied yeah, by brief very very brief ambience but one that is so foreign, so strange, it's almost extra extraterrestrial when it's finally made. Right. It's very overwhelming too. It can be yeah. like that's as it would be if if you interacted with any extraterrestrials right. on a personal yeah. level. It would be it, overwhelming. It, it's like yeah. a beautiful moment, but it's also like horrifying. The beauty yeah. and the enlightenment, but the fear and panic of not knowing whether or not the entity 
the sentience that you're interacting with is there to kill you or there to simply provide you more knowledge on the universe. Right. Um, I think that would be a really beautiful way to attempt to translate the music and like what you're right. trying to write music. And that's, the, that's kind of the feeling that we try to give you, you know, through the ambience, but especially Casper B. Especially Casper B. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole like, that's a whole concept where we had a story we came up with. And yeah. Like, we were making our own little alien world there. Yeah. I had like a big, uh, so I wrote the lyrics for the first song on it. Um, what? Planet uh, Interfectorum. Interfectorum. Planet uh, Interfectorum. Uh, I wrote the lyrics for that, and I was just like picturing this huge, almost like Star Wars esque everything popping out of light speed. And it's just yeah. like super slow mo of them just destroying all these planets. That's basically what the song's about, like yeah. setting setting the bad guy. Okay, uh, we, just, we just had a story going, and we'll be talking about that story here in a second. So don't you boys worry about oh, my that. Bad, sure, sure. <laughs> <It's my bad. laughs> um, part three of that kind of clickbait. We lost you. Oh, we lost you again. <laughs> Okay, so part three of those rather clickbait questions in the moment that sweaty ass file revelation newly made vile revelation fan in the merch line. We have so far understood the or and was first the reason behind the name, but what has developed over time as your discography continues. We then after that kind of asked you the more aggressive question for most of your fans, like what makes you different from Lorna Shore? You sound exactly like them or whatever. You're like, okay, calm down. There's a lot more to that. If um, I get called Bender one more time, I'm going to fucking lose my mind. <laughs> well, you're definitely a lot more slam and deathcore oriented as opposed to black and death yeah. metal. So, and you yeah. don't, you, you've never really, um, at least through a vultures and of a vultures and flesh and then cast from okay. Eden or beneath the chapel um, of misery. I've never really been able to articulate anything you've said. So, I mean, that's, Perfect. <laughs> that's, that's, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Because <laughs> that's, that makes me that's for me. I, I hear everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, well, when you're in the booth, of course, you're going to hear everything. And right. depending on how many fucking takes you have to do, you're like, God damn it. I missed the Fred again. Like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Exit third. Post. Yeah. Third question of that clickbait moment, that imaginary scenario would be me asking you. What's the most important thing about writing a vile revelation song from start to finish and why? We're gonna have uh, so I we're, think we're the most by it because we're gonna have very different answers. Okay. Uh, I think the most, the most important part for me is keeping the song interesting. Um whether or not it's introducing a new riff uh, or changing up the the orchestra or the lead melody or whatever it is. Um, like I was saying, I really, really don't like my songs. It sounds stale at any point. And um, just keeping the listener engaged and um, just keeping them interested um, as opposed to dragging a part out and you'll kind of get distracted from it. Um, which I feel like is a problem with a lot of black and death core is, um, they'll drag a part out and you start to lose interest. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's the biggest part for me probably is that I try to keep it interesting, have something new happening all the time. Uh, you never really expect what's about to happen. Um, you have a lot of breakdowns that come out of nowhere. Yeah. That kind of thing yeah. where it, like you'll be listening and think you know what's going on and it'll take you for a turn yeah a lack of um, predictability yeah yeah um and i think that really helps keep it interesting and i think that's the biggest part for me it, yeah. i'm trying to keep the listener engaged no matter what what tactic i use to do that um just keeping it fun and interesting yeah i'd say he, again he's like the logical part of it where I'm like the, I wouldn't say emotional, but I'm just like the the feeling of it, where I'm like very much focused, like, does the atmosphere, this is making fit whatever we 
pre-title the song or whatever. Like I, I, I very much will visualize what's happening. Um, even if I'm not writing the lyrics to it, or maybe we have an idea where we need to go right next. And I'm very much on top of like, this just doesn't feel right to me. Like what's happening right now or this and that, or I, I'm very much, I want a certain atmosphere to the song where I'll make him change. Yeah. Like whatever scale he uses, things like that to just like, it just doesn't feel right to the nature of it. He's big on the mood. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much, uh, outside of music. I think a lot in music. It's all about how it feels to me. Yeah. Does it, is there some redeeming factor in the song I'm listening to that like scratches my brain right or makes me feel a certain way? Like it, it just needs to have that factor to me. It has to be emotionally compelling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it, like, it doesn't have to be a serious song. I, in yeah. fact, I very much don't like serious songs. Like I, I'd prefer a song that's like about something unrealistic. Fictional. Yeah. yeah. Something fictional, yeah. not, based in reality but also it can reflect on reality but it's just not like directly about that it, it provides that it truly provides that escapism as opposed yeah. to yeah, um, exactly. throughout the entirety of the creation you being engaged in the psyche of another person that's behind and i think th i think that also makes it a lot more interesting like instead of uh, writing a song about being sad you can write a song uh, making a metaphor about it, yeah. um, but then not not exactly saying it like at face value. But maybe the music can set Definitely. set the mood of where you should be shifting your emotion and whatnot. Fair enough. Okay, cool. Well, thank yeah. you, gentlemen, for asking those three rather clickbait questions that most likely you'll be hearing from Vile Revelation fans in the near future, but hopefully not nearly many of them will be asking the questions as we, as of the 12th of February, 2024, we'll have the answers to those questions. And if they need to be updated in the future, if you change your minds, well, that's exactly why we will have you return in the future. But until then, well, the answers are here, folks. They're just a little bit deeper into session. That's why you gotta listen. Um, so getting out of that mindset, getting out of that imaginary scenario, I think now would be a great time to go ahead and go under the skin of your new six track EP, Cast from Eden. What do you boys say? I like it. Yep. That's good. Cool. That's so weird. kind of separating from that scenario with the sweaty vile revelation fan asking you the borderline keem star level questions like how's tour going what's your band's name what's the meaning behind it la 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 we now get a little bit more intimate with the vile revelation discography and instead quite literally close your eyes right and just imagine yourself in a library you're not in vile revelation anymore you're not known as a vocalist brandon you're not known as a musical mastermind isaac instead you're a freaking bookworm okay you're a fucking nerd in a different way and you are going into the library you see what is the album cover for cast from eden but only cast from eden is on the front and maybe vile revelation tiniest shit in the bottom right hand corner of the book but the most important part despite this gorgeous album cover this gorgeous primarily purple album cover you turn it over and there is an excerpt, there is a passage of text that is meant to entice you, maybe even seduce you if you're that much of a bookworm into opening up the book in the first place. As far as that passage, that chunk of text on the back, trying to lure you into the reading process, what would that say and why? So you want to just say the first verse? That's a pretty good... Right. Pretty good descriptor of the boss. This is about to be real wordy. <laughs> a being native only to realms beyond the grasp of human consciousness erupts into reality through a crystalline structure. Invoker of light forming parallel realities inside an infinite mind spanning aeons forever stretching through the cycles of time. I feel like oh, that could be on the back of the book as like <laughs> you the description. You might. You feel smarter. But what the fuck did I just read? <laughs> no, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> not, not a good book to read if you're high. Just like, whoa, why, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No recuse. Maybe to listen to. Yeah, right. Listen exactly. to. Excellent. I've done it many times already. Magnificent. Magnifico. So then say you are enticed despite what was a very, very intimidating intermediate level vocabulary chunk of text trying to introduce you to the album, right? You, you're like, yeah, fine, fuck it. I'm high, but I should read a book about aliens, this, this interdimensional being beyond human comprehension. There doesn't seem to be one on the cover. Is he on the cover? Who knows? And you're looking at the art because this is also something very important. We all know this is the first impressions with the album art. What yes. was the creative process behind the album art? Who is the artist? Um, let's go ahead and get a little bit of background on them and then proceed from that point. Okay, so this is crazy, right? Because everybody orders their album art. It's like handmade to what they wanted. We did it on a Vultures and Flesh, and we were talking about having like this alien astronaut floating in space, but it's like a zoom in on his face with like a planet exploding in the reflection. And we we're like, man, okay, so we got to find somebody who does art like this that we want and then kind of come up with a general rough, like, draft, basically, of it. And I was just, like, scrolling through Facebook, and uh, Alpha Vectors uh, had, like, a post up, and I saw, like, some cool album art, whatever, but it was, like, plus 80, right? So I'm like, oh, fuck it, we're looking for something. I'll just click. Maybe there's inspiration or something like that there where I can be like, hey, I really like the color palette on this or whatever and i'm looking and i see the album art that we end up getting right um basically the climax of the story yeah involves a black hole yeah and it's just this giant black hole beautiful colors from an alien looking landscape and i was just like over top of like a kingdom yeah and it just it like it fit it fit the concept so perfectly yeah like it fit the concept better than anything we could have imagined like our idea would have looked dumb compared, compared to, to what we have like it was just like, kind of like it happened yeah and it was meant to happen right like us finding each other so yeah <laughs> we had to pull the trigger on that artwork as in, yeah the same day it was I like think. instantly yeah i saw it i sent it to him he said how much i said how much to the guy and then we bought it yeah Fair enough. Okay. And it um, was pre-made, but it was a pre-made, but it was just like it fit so much better than anything I could have yeah. commissioned from anyone. Uh there was there was no point in trying to, you know, describe that artwork pretty much to yeah. someone else. To me, it feels like a quintessential death work art, but like not in like the it's basic, it's like so unique. It, it feels like one of the better arts in deathcore. Yeah. Whether or not the EP album turns out that way, like the artwork is legendary. Yeah. Yes. Like it's insane. Fair enough. It's alpha vectors. I don't know if I said that. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. That's that's a okay, correct. Cool. Um, I can't say it enough. <laughs> it's insane. And also, uh, did my next release are. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. So then we, we kind of more or less have the background behind the artist. We have the reason that you decided to acquire this piece of art, even if some of it was pre-made. Like, I understand that when a band is smaller, when a band project is smaller, and maybe perhaps they just don't know what to put for the album cover, and then they happen upon something like that. I can understand it. Um, like, really, Alpha Vectors, I've, I've understood them to be primarily an AI, AI art. Um, generator per se but they do i think they do touch up on the art afterwards like they adjusted they edit it so i'm not exactly going to try to start a smear campaign for someone who is just trying things out utilizing technology yeah. um but yeah if, if anything as someone who's trying to get into that avenue it's it's only a little bit intimidating when you see so many individuals like that who are just like okay forest black skinwalker skinwalker yes and then you know then they kind of put it in it auto i'm watching for you now <laughs> <laughs> um it, you know i i understand the process so i won't i won't do a smear campaign but definitely not um for it for the most part um mm -hmm. but the album art is beautiful the variety of colors they do 
ascend and they contribute to the aesthetic that you guys are hoping to fulfill Definitely. and make and therefore allow vile revelation to distinguish themselves from other bands right um so why did you choose the title cast from eden okay um so not only was cast from eden the name was vile revelation the original name um which i wanted to kind of call back to that and use that name because i think it's good. um um have you ever read the book paradise lost no um you talking about being in a library was a good analogy because this whole album is um it's kind of like a metaphor for the book paradise lost which is paradise lost is um the biblical story it's not like biblical canon but right it's the biblical story of creation and the garden of eden from the perspective of the devil um and we kind of took that story and put it in space and made it about aliens um so we we thought the name cast from eden just just fit um with it being a concept album about a book that was written like fucking 400 years ago um i just think it's awesome i've always been big into biblical concepts i think it's they're just badass yeah um it is a good the best story book yeah um yeah the name cast from eden just kind of fit with with it being an analogy about the devil getting kicked out of eden um yeah, being cast from Eden. Right. Exactly. Yep. Fair enough. Okay. Awesome. So, as we truly kickstart what will be the under the skin session for these six tracks on this very, very blackened but atmospheric deathcore um, deathcore album EP, um, we have track one, which is. I I I delete I closed the Google Drive folder so. Um, it's like planet of the inner factorum. Yep. There we go. Okay. Same so <laughs> I would hope you would know the name of the song. Look, it's into the mud to me. He says, look. Um, <laughs> um, it's forever so, burned in my book. It's a pre pro Planet uh Interfectorum, by the way, is Latin for planet killer. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, so I always liked Latin. I think it's a badass language. It so I do one song a little more heavy. Yeah, exactly. It just makes them a little bit more heavy. Exactly. Yeah, so, it does. It, it's that genuine, like, evil, like that people. It's evil. that, like, evil vibe. That true, sure. It's like true, natural evil, but uh, spiritual, even. I know. Exactly. So with this first track, this is obviously the opener. I made the comment of comparing this to that of the title track for Warm Shepherds, which roll hymns, yeah. which was released January of 2022. Very iconic record. Um, oh, one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Of sort of name all. Oh. Good shit. So starting off with this track. Not only is it the intro, not only does it kind of sound like ritual hymns, but obviously it's its own thing. What's going on here, lyrically speaking, Brandon? Oh, I didn't write this one, so I better I better answer this. Hold on, let me go back. So, um, as I said before, it's kind of the uh, it's like setting the scene. All these alien spaceships pop out of nowhere, right? And they're annihilating just an innocent star system. Like, not even just a planet, just a star system. So that's just kind of, it's a lot of detailed description. It'd be like if you slowed down this five-second window into this whole four-and-a-half-minute song. Fair enough. It's kind of slowing down and just trying to paint a picture over it with there just being, like, there's a dialogue section uh, between the leaders and that. I, I don't know. It's just... It's an experience. Yeah, this this song is pretty much setting the scene for the concept yeah. of the album. Yeah, fair enough. And um, um, if I may ask, what was the reason for um, the vocal feature from Clockwise? Oh, from Casey. Um, he just like 
complements me really well. I wanted to feature Casey pretty early on in the album process. Um, and we were debating on where to put him because uh, we wanted to have him feature on the album. We didn't exactly know where yet. Um, but we found that that spot uh, in specific was perfect. Um, his highs are some of my favorite highs yeah. in all of Deathcore. Um, I think he just sounded great. So I was really happy to get him onto the song. Fantastic. Next on this six track EP, we have Upon the, Ga oh, the Gates boy. of Ishtar featuring Screamy mm -hmm. Mimi of oh, both Bro Job and End of Venera, oh, which is fantastic. It's like phenomenal, phenomenal that you guys managed to get this vocalist featured on this EP um, as when it yeah. is music for uh -huh. me. Well, End of Venera also hosts McNasty as a lead right. guitarist. Um, so really, really cool opportunity you guys got here. But first of all, you know, we got to speak upon the lyrical contents and then possibly even the musical compositions, being that we have the main mind in that for that, um, the musical composition in session tonight. What's going on with Upon the Gates of Ishtar? Um, so I actually wrote the lyrics for this song, as I did with a few of the songs. Most of them? Um, well, all but two. Um, so if the first song was setting the scene, Upon the Gates is going back this is this is the beginning of the story um so the very first verse we see these aliens kind of spawning into existence um and the big mechanism that they use for uh gaining power or growing is eating the souls of any kind of creature um eating the soul severing it from any kind of divine intervention um so that's what we see is and this is also doing quite a bit of world building in this song um so the garden of eden we have we've turned that into a star system into a galaxy um it's the galaxy that's of that's eden um that's and then the the planet um instead of having adam and eve as personified characters eve is a planet um so in this song we see um this fleet of starships uh kind of like zap into the atmosphere of the planet eve um and they just start tearing stuff up um and the breakdown um uh the river sticks hate for life forms ravage the skies cause cosmic imminence uh devastation that's just a very like simple way of putting that this planet is being devastated um and yeah that's this song is really another one just setting the scene for i guess introducing what's about to happen in the story gotcha Let's see and then obviously like i can only imagine the reason you ended up um wanting to get screamy mimi featured on this song because he is a phenomenal vocalist even Derek Soli of nithful can attest to that he's um i can mainly recall him for his iconic lows and how much yeah. of a howl tone there is to his lows. Yes. But what what was the reason you wanted to get him featured on this song aside from that? If not if there is anything aside from that. So this is gonna be kind of the running theme for the rest of the features is they're all just like the homies. Uh, <laughs> um I met him through a friend that I recorded our first song we did together at his house. Um they were friends online and played games together quite a bit and whatnot. Uh, and he found out I like Deathcore at some point, and we just like instant friends. Uh, and then I got to play a show with them in Michigan. Uh, and literally the second they pulled in the parking lot, I was just like, oh, my gosh, we just hit it off. I'm a ball of energy right now. Mary, with you. Keep it low. You're fine. Yeah, he um he fit that section on the song really well. 
so yeah we were really happy to get him on that song fuck yeah next track track three would be crown of ascension featuring tusk of d4c d4c being a project i have like i am not at all familiar with that really so i'm sure yeah <laughs> I'm sure you guys will introduce me in due time as we're talking about this track. What's so, going on lyrically speaking with this one? What foot are you reading? Yeah, you're doing it. You wrote um, it. So I wrote this song as well. You do the one so, you wrote. <laughs> going forward in the story, Crown of Ascension is the story of one of these aliens out of this whole fleet. It's about one. And it kind of goes through his story. Um, on his path of destruction as he's gaining power and um by the end of the song he becomes pretty much the king of the aliens um he um he gains power through this soul stealing technology um he becomes the strongest of all the aliens which is why he's the king pretty much um and it kind of goes through how like in more detail on how he's doing the things he's doing where these beings whose souls have been eaten they kind of become part of his army of like empty corpses um that that that's it pretty much his army um and then on dio's feature oh he wrote his own lyrics didn't he yeah um he actually wrote his own lyrics that act that fit really well for the song um <laughs> step the fuck up pussy was um, <laughs> probably the one line i would exclude from bidding but it just kind of like fit his vibe to it's him though yeah that's what it's him do. yeah it's hardcore um and then the final breakdown, the line is to reign forever, which is kind of the the alien's main plan here is to control the universe forever. So that song um, is called Crown of Ascension. And in the final verse, you see uh, this alien ascend to the crown pretty much. Yeah. Fantastic. Next, we have the title track for the record. And this one was really, really satisfying to listen to. And it was also the longest song on the record. Oh, what yeah. do we have here, lyrically speaking? There's a lot of lyrics going on There's here. There's a ton. Um, the and, and this one is probably telling the most story. So um, in the first verse, we see a perspective of these aliens once again, like zapping into this area. Um, and this kind of gives more detail on the destruction of the planet of Eve from back in Upon the Gates. Um, so in the first verse, we see um, these aliens, and you kind of get some more details on what they are and where they come from. Um, and then going into the chorus, the chorus is actually a prayer from the people on Eve. Um, so completely detached from the aliens, this is a prayer from the people of Eve to their divine being, asking it to save them from these alien attackers, pretty much. Um, and that's the chorus. So then verse two, we see the perspective of this divine being who wields a blade of fire, which is a reference to the story of Eden, um, the angel, the angel guardian of Eden who has a blade of fire. Um, and then the bridge is the same. This um, divine being is called luminescence as just a reference to a being of light and power. Um, so going into the bridge, it says luminescence returns in a glow like never before. Um, so now we have this divine being and then the aliens and they're about to go head to head. Um, the first part of the breakdown, um, we get into really deep detail on the aliens. We're back on the aliens. Um, Can I read it? Really deep detail on what the aliens are doing to the people. So he's going to read that. Uh, we're going to start up slam, right? Yep. 
Right. Plaguing it and he's seeping through the wormhole so seeking you can just <laughs> you, you won't be able to understand it. All right, all right, all right. Plaguing entities seeping through the wormhole, seeking nourishment from living beings, caught inside a vortex, darkened matter, breeding inside the cranial cavity, creating drones to feed upon their aura. Infinite consummation leaves nothing but empty skulls. A, pyra ugh, a pyramid effigy construct built high from piled corpses left behind from speeding cycle. Construction fueled by hatred from these fucking eternal nightmares spawned from the deepest abyss. A prophecy only dreamt of beginning to fulfill. I caught myself trying to do it. It's fun. Um, Percussive. So, yeah, that's what the aliens are doing, pretty much. And then in the third verse, we see um, that these aliens are, this is where we get the description of how they steal souls. Um, gorged on the soul force, severing our core, leading back from the heavens. Um, this last line is kind of like, it's another prayer to the divine being, um, saying, Hey, these aliens are stealing our souls and we need help. Um, because once the aliens eat the, the, the creature's soul, they no longer have that connection to the divine. Um, so they're saying we need help. And then it's the chorus again, which is another prayer. Um, and then this first, or I guess it'd be the second breakdown. Um, this is when the divine being uh, intervenes, I guess. Um, and it puts these aliens in a, a cosmic prison, pretty much. Um, It imprisons them in an infinite fractal complex thing. It's not really, it's kind of hard to translate, but like it's an infinite prison where they're not supposed to be able to escape from. These are the aliens. Um, and that takes us straight into Theophagy, which is the fifth song, where it begins with a person on the planet of eve having a premonition um so the first line is i had a vision and it talks about how um this person has a vision of aliens like seeping onto their planet and destroying everything and then um it happens these aliens start uh coming out of their prison and um, we see like a first person perspective of these aliens. Um, the concept of theophagy being um, drinking or eating the blood of a god to become a god. That's the concept of theophagy. Um, so we see the aliens doing that. Um, so in this song, these aliens are themselves becoming gods becoming divine beings um, after they've broken out of their prison um, and they become divine beings preparing for like this epic battle with the God that cast them from Eden. And that leads into the fall of Yggdrasil, which you wrote. I wrote the first half. You wrote second. Yeah. All right. So the first half of this song is from the perspective of the God, goddess of Eden. Um, and basically it's just a monologue directed, uh, to the aliens, but the king of the aliens from crown of ascension as he's leading them in, it's a monologue about she's going to smite them from the universe. So it's like, a, it's like a scene out of an anime. Yeah. Um, which goes into the breakdown, which is the description. Um, you can read the breakdown. You're better at reading than me right now so the breakdown is kind of like when the aliens make their first move their first attack towards the god kind of what happens yeah. it's describing it um so the breakdown is focused energy drawn from the universe compressed into infinite oblivion dark matter begins to stabilize and pull tearing apart the fabrics of your reality so in this breakdown we kind of see that the they're 
basically harnessing black matter in the universe to tear this dog like god to pieces right so the aliens are getting the upper hand here yeah I think it's into the chorus, which is you on, right? Yeah. So the chorus is more of like an overview of this last of this conclusion to the album. Um, I'll just read it. Entrenched in a cold black vortex, my reign of hate has darkened the stars. The prophecy complete, my will ingrained in the deepest space time forevermore. No light remains in the cosmos. No life will ever return. Um. So that's more of an overview, which happens in the middle of this song and at the end, and it fits both places. Um, because in the end, it makes more sense lyrically. But in the second verse after that chorus, we see that the alien's plan starts to go wrong. Um, so the aliens harnessing dark matter to, de to destroy this god um, they create a black hole. And this black hole, after enveloping the energy of this god, becomes like infinitely large because it's taken in all of this spiritual matter from this god. It becomes bigger than the aliens had planned for. And this this black hole pretty much uh, takes in everything like all of reality becomes encapsulated in this black hole and there is absolutely nothing there is nothing left in the universe except for this black hole yeah um it's basically the perspective of just like a consciousness like flickering out yeah and just going from everything existing to in an instant nothing exists there is no existence is pretty much the concept of the end of the song. And then um, it kind of gives some perspective on how the aliens caused this, um, not intentionally because they wanted to reign, they wanted to rule the universe, but through their gluttony ended up destroying the universe. Um, and then the last chorus again, just kind of gives that overview uh no light remains in the cosmos no life will ever return uh and that's how we end the album with nothing in existence which is why there's no breakdown yep can't have a breakdown if nothing exists <laughs> choke on that death corners <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, oh lost we lost your audio, audio. <laughs> i was like wait it's like we didn't leave you speechless <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a vile revelation of cosmic proportions. That's how I would just yeah, yeah. yes. Um, fantastic gentlemen. I do appreciate you providing the commentary that you did. And that will be the end of the underskin under the skin session. Whoop. And now we get into the final chunk of time, most likely eight minutes for me and eight minutes for the boys, as it is getting closer to 10 p.m. for them. So Definitely has been a longer session, but an organic session, right? Yes, really, really yeah. awesome yeah. conversation. Yeah. It's It's been a long time in the making, really, since I listened to Of Vultures and Flesh back in 2022. It has been a long journey getting to this point. We finally conquered this first debut session between the Anatomy Podcast and Vile Revelation. We have asked you, or I have asked you, as it is just me tonight, a great many questions. We have told your story. We have we have gone under the skin of an album that has yet to even come out, really. But as soon as it unleashes onto the public, I do foresee at least that 439 ascending to a thousand listeners monthly, if not more. Because you guys, hope so. yeah. you, you guys have a lot That's of untapped good. potential. Um, right. So as we're looking to conclude the session. Did you boys want to make a shout out to anything happening in the near future? Shout out to um, anybody involved in this process that you have not yet mentioned. Forecast from Eden. Um, what do you want to talk about for the last chunk of time? Um, after Cast from Eden comes out um, on April Fool's Day, it will be. We have a super serious original song. 
super serious and original on april fool's day april 1st we will be dropping a cover i'm not going to say what the cover is or who it's by but we are dropping a cover who has been mixed by my good friend jeff key so i'd like to shout out to him and i do believe he'll be mixing all of our music in the future um i just think taking that load off me will help me write a lot more music instead of having to worry about mixing it um so jeff will be doing that so i like to give a big shout out to him um and then i would just say keep an eye out because we're gonna have a lot of singles coming out we're gonna have a new album hopefully by the end of this year so um we're we're gonna be pumping out music so if you like black and deathcore if you like deathcore if you like black and death metal if you like aliens if you like conspiracy theories fuck it maybe the birds aren't real we're the band for you there you go exactly maybe the birds aren't real let's get that printed on some merch and um you know <laughs> quite unfortunately we yeah. weren't able to get any of the other like feature vocalists in session tonight nor the yeah. remaining i do believe half of the band that is vile revelation but as far as i'm concerned we did still accomplish a great many milestones tonight in kind of adjusting the formula of the anatomy podcast going forward after again a very successful session with cell the oklahoma ass beaters and cell currently signed to unbeaten records um we talked about a lot tonight and we got very very comfortable we got very familiar so i do indeed look forward to the future between the anatomy podcast sean cross the or king blind without our failures and file revelation but for sure just like the great eternal music machine people let's go ahead and keep cranking thank you gentlemen for your time tonight and everybody we'll hear you we'll we'll see you next time <laughs> simply all said right. thank you sean thank Absolutely. you all right